everyone. Uh, this public hearing of the Senate Committee on Women, Children, Family Relations, and Gender Equality is hereby called to order. For the first part of our hearing, we shall be discussing several bills on the prevention of teenage pregnancy. And for the second part are two bills on gender responsive and inclusive pandemic protocols. Before we go further, let me first acknowledge the presence of Sen Aimi Marcos, Agyamanak for being here, and Sen Rafi Tulfo. Salamat po sa presensya ninyo. And uh, with uh, three senators in total present, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. Just a brief uh, opening statement, and then I will ask my colleagues if they would also like to make one. Aside from the three bills being considered today, we note that Senate Resolution 462, authored by Senator Angara, entitled Resolution Directing the Appropriate Senate Committee to Conduct an Inquiry in Aid of Legislation on the Alarming Increase of Pregnancies Among 10 to 14-Year-Olds, has been filed and is awaiting referral, most likely to this committee. Last 2021, it was reported that there were 386,000 Filipino girls, or 6.8% of girls aged 15 to 19, who had begun childbearing. This translated to around 306,000 girls who had already given birth and 79,000 girls who were then pregnant with their child. These numbers, believe it or not, dear colleagues, were an improvement of the childbearing rates reported a decade ago when the teenage childbearing rate was at 13.7%. While the trend for teen pregnancies among girls aged 15 to 19 is declining, a recent worrisome trend among girls aged 10 to 14 has been emerging. In 2021, pregnancy among very young girls increased with 2,113 births recorded from this age group in 2020, this is PSA data, to 2,299 in 2021, DOH data. As legislators and as leaders of implementing agencies, everyone here in the room has a responsibility for each and every one of these young parents. And I'm sure our leaders of civil society feel the same way, perhaps even our leaders of the private sector. There is an urgent need to improve the current legal framework that limits the remedies that address the prevention of adolescent pregnancies and to build on the victories that we have already secured in terms of upholding the sexual and reproductive health rights of adolescent Filipinos. There have been efforts from local chief executives to combat the issue of adolescent pregnancies. Initiatives from the province of Isabela and the cities of Naga, Tuguegarao, and Quezon City, among others, demonstrate that local leaders see an urgent need to address the needs of adolescent parents through the issuance and approval of ordinances and implementation of relevant programs. These efforts underline the urgent need for a national policy to ensure that all Filipino adolescents are catered to, not just young Filipinos in select municipalities, cities, and provinces who are fortunate to reside in places with ordinances and programs in place. With these said, I look forward to hearing from our NGAs and stakeholders to see their recommendations on how we can work together in reducing adolescent pregnancies in the country. Maraming salamat po. Uh, Sen Aimi, would you like to make an opening statement? Yes, uh, I would just like uh, to add um, that the World Bank has repeatedly cited teenage pregnancy uh, rates in the Philippines as no longer a health or a gender problem, but uh, more uh, largely an economic development problem. The lack of an overarching plan has uh, seen a huge toll, despite the fact that we are all um, uh, excited and... Uh, um, and uh, very pleased that uh, the rates have actually declined over the past few years. Nevertheless, uh, it is still alarming, as our chairwoman has said, that uh, 
the ages of 10 uh, to 14 and 15 continue to post huge numbers in uh, teenage uh, pregnancy. So isa yun, yung age, yung ikalawa, yung uh, napakaliwanag na poverty divide na napakaklaro na uh, yung, uh, yung ating uh, nagkukulang sa uh, edukasyon at kulang sa kabuhayan eh talagang bagsak na bagsak pati rin sa kalusugan at sa uh, mga kababaihan ano kasi yung pinakamataas ay eh, yung uh, Davao region yung northern Mindanao at uh, 10.9 or almost 11% pagkalaki-laki noon samantalang other regions that are more prosperous perhaps and more advantaged um, are posting much better results thirdly perhaps i would like to observe that uh, with all due respect to the deped Wala naman pong teenager, lahat tayo dumanas ng pagiging teenager, hindi kailan man tayo nakinig sa teacher o magulang. So, may I just uh, reassert what uh, was included in my bill, and that is not merely depending on our teachers, um, but rather to peers, to uh, the peers through the uh, DILG, perhaps uh, uh, enlisting the Sangguniang Kabataan as another mode of national service, tumulong sila sa information dissemination, yung ating local youth development councils na itinatag, marami rin uh, uh, local youth development offices, pati yung mga social media, uh, yun naman talaga ang sikat ngayon at uh, palagay ko kinakailangan yung mga influencer at iba pang mga uh, kinakailangan kausapin, e eh, talagang uh, i-recruit na natin sa effort na ito. Lalong-lalo na yung private sector sa advertising and uh, commercials dahil kung minsan baliktad yung epekto ng ating advertisements, mas lalo pang sumisikat ang uh, teenage uh, uh, pregnant mothers kesa um, hindi. So these are uh, the observations I have of the previous uh, committee's report, uh, as well as uh, the reactions to uh, recent developments that are looking good naman po. So that's all and we are here to listen. And Yamanax and Aimi, and yes, uh, aside from Senate Bill 372 of this representation and Senate Bill 1209 of Senator Revilla, we are also hearing today Senate Bill 651 of Sen Aimi. Salamat po. Sen Rafi, would you like to make an opening statement? Yes, Madam Chair. Good morning, Madam Chairman, Senator Risa Ontiveros, and good morning to all our guests and resource speakers. Before anything else, I commend the efforts of this committee in addressing this alarming issue on adolescent or teenage pregnancy. The UNFPA 2020 policy brief finding that 97% of all live births within the adolescent age group had been fathered by men who are older than them did not surprise me. Nakakalungkot po, pero di na po ako nagulat. Sa programa ko po, so wanted sa radio, ang dabi ko na pong magulang ang nagpunta na nireklamo na ang kanilang anak na nawawala. Yung pala ay tinangay ng lalaking may edad na hanggang sa ang dalagita ay mabuntis. Humingi po ng tulong ang mga magulang na i-rescue mga anak nila sa mga lalaking ito. Minsan, tawagan po namin sila, malalaman ko na kusang sumama o makbo ang bata doon sa lalaki at ayaw nang umuwi sa magulang nila. Ang dahilan. Kesyo na pagalitan ito, kaya nagrebelde. Dahil dito, madali sila maakit ng mga kalalakiang malayo mas nakatanda sa kanila upang sila ay itanan. Meron naman mga kaso na mga nakatandang kalalakian na pinagkakatiwala ng mga biktima at ng pamilya nito ang mga mismo nagiging sexual predators, mga tiyuhin, ninong, at kuminsan nakakalungkot ay pati mga guro. Ako ay ama rin ng isang babae kaya ramdam ko ang kahalagahan ng panukala na pag-uusapan ngayong araw. When we have our children, we only dream good things for them and we swear on our life that we will protect them at all costs. Nobody envisions situations like teenage pregnancies will happen to their daughters. But it is a reality that we are facing and based on the statistics, 
we must act with urgency. I'm in full support of the policies and programs in Senate Bill 372 of our dear Chairman Rizon Tiberos, as well as Senate Bill 1209 by Senator Bong Revilla and Senate Bill 651 by Senator Jaime Marcos. Problems like these are difficult to address because there is no one form, there is no formula, one formula to prevent teenage pregnancy. Each incident comes with its own story. But I believe that going back to basics and to the root of the problem will be our best bet. The program laid down is most admirable because it makes use of what we already have. Our schools, our parents, and even the youth community to which these teenage women belong to. Strengthening these groups and arming them with the right skills, training, and formation building will provide the best support for the adolescent youth. We must strengthen the Filipino family and the Filipino family values. Grand be as conservative if you must, but I believe that we have let go of our traditional values, which is anchored on genuine love. Teens go looking for their loved one or love in other forms because of overexposure to promiscuous materials online. It is so accessible and free. We must reassess our values formation for our children. And as legislators, this is our duty. According to our constitution, the natural and primary right and duty of parents in the rearing of the youth for civic efficiency and the development of moral characters shall receive the support of the government. Thus, I urge my colleagues to support this bill. Teenage pregnancy will the teenage pregnancy will not happen to their daughters, but it is a reality that we are facing. And based on the statistic, statistics, we must act with urgency. I'm in full support of the policies and programs in Senate Bill 372. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Madam Chair. Thank you, Sen. Rafi. Before we uh, start the discussion, let's first acknowledge our resource persons. May I request the committee secretary to read the names of our resource persons joining us today? Good morning, everyone. Uh, the committee would like to acknowledge the presence of the following resource person. From the Department of Health, we have uh, Dr. Jose Gerald Bellimac, uh, Dr. Bernadette Velasco, then from uh, the United Nations Population Fund, we have Dr. Lila Sanchez Jordan. Uh, from the UN Women Philippines, we have Ms. Cherise Jordan. From the Young Feminist uh, Collective, we have Ms. Diana Katrina Fontamillas. From the Philippine Legislators Committee on Population and Development, we have Mr. Romeo Dungueto. Then from the Bureau of Learner Support Service of the Department of Education, we have uh, Director Danette Esplana Alama. From the Council for the Welfare of Children, we have Yusek Angelo M. Tapales and uh, Attorney Rafael Ricalde. Then from uh, the Youth, uh, from the Quezon City Youth Development, uh, we have uh, Youth Officer Miss Carmela Bondo. From the Save the Children, we have Miss Vivienne Grace Martin and uh, Attorney Emma Salmani. Then from uh, the Galang Philippines, we have Max Marie Rose Ramos. Joining us online, we have with us uh, Miss Elizabeth Angshoko from the Democratic Socialist Women of the Philippines. Then we have uh, from the Philippine legislator, uh, from, uh, we have uh, Ms. Luisa Carla Galicia. Then from the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos, we have Commissioner Samir Along. And uh, from the Commission on Population, we have Deputy Executive Director, Mr. Lolito Tacardon. From the Movie and Television Review and Classification Board, we have Attorney Miles De Los Reyes. 
From the National Commission on Indigenous People, we have Attorney Jeffrey Bertudes and Mr. Ross Jacob Rosales. From the Technical Education and Skill Development Authority, we have Attorney Joyce Balong. Then from the UP Population Institute, we have Associate Professor Ms. Elma Laguna. Then from the Alliance for Family Foundation Philippines, we have Ms. Anna Betasa. We have Attorney Joel Arzaga. Then from the Roots uh, Founding Executive of the Roots of Health, we have Ms. Amina Evangelista Swankwell. Then from the Philippine Commission on Women, we have Attorney Christine Rosary Yuson Chavez. Then from the Commission on Human Rights, we have Ms. Patricia Isabella C. Then from uh, Plan International Philippines, we have the Country Program Manager, Ms. Twyla Ann David, and uh, Ms. Pauline Gutierrez. From the Oxfam Philippines, we have Ms. Erica Hieronimo. Then from the Women's Legal and Human Rights Bureau of uh, uh, we have uh, Ms. Jelen Palparin. From the Center for Migrants Advocacy, we have Ms. Ellen Sana. We have Mr. Paul Chan Flores. We, ha we have Ms. Nancy Gaspar. We have Ms. Sarah Lopez. And then from Akbayanihan, we have Ms. Kathleen Kissy Sumailo Perlman. That's all, Madam Chair. Thank you. Salamat din, Comsec. And, uh, well, Unless I'm missing some faces, we have maybe a little more than half of the invited resource persons uh, still hopefully arriving. Pero kung sino man ang hindi makapagsalita today because they are they will not be able to attend, the committee will just ask them to submit their uh, position papers in writing. So uh, the committee is now ready to listen to the prepared position papers, comments, proposals from our invited resource persons. So may I first call on Ms. Carmela Bondoc from the uh, QC Youth Development Office. So good morning, Carmela. Could you open your mic? Salamat. Good morning po. Good morning. So Carmela, uh, pwede mo bang sabihin sa komite uh, during your pregnancy, Meron bang mga specific things o mga programa na wish mo noon na napoprovide ng mga LGUs or mga national government agencies na pwede sanang tulungan ka habang ikaw ay nagbubuntis noon? Nung sa part ko po dati na, nung time po na yun, um, pinaka basic needs po kasi talaga yung sa pagbubuntis po, yung mga ganun, yung mga kailangan na mga check up, mga ganun. Pero since nga po, teenage po ako nun, tapos uh, wala din po tatay yung anak ko. Um, parang hirap po para sa akin yung mga ganong suporta, kagaya po yung mga kailangan po para talaga sa mga nagbubuntis. So hindi ko po talaga siya. Kumbaga yung parang sa akin, mairaos ko na lang na mailabas po ng normal yung anak ko. Parang ganun na lang po nung time na yun. Um, so yung mga check up, uh... Inasahan mo sana sa sa city government, sa LGU, and then sa na, or sa national government agencies. Bukod doon, meron pa po bang particular na inasahan mo sana sa LGU at particular na inasahan mo sana sa national government agencies? Importante kung may mga mungka, eh, sa question ka sa LGUs dahil uh, kasama sa resource persons natin, yung mga leagues of LGUs and dun sa national government agencies, importante rin kung may mga uh, suggestion ka dahil nandito rin yung ating mga departments. Ayun po, pag ano po, nung time po na yun sa ano na po eh, uh, after mga check-up ganyan, ang pinakapaproblemahin ko po dun is yung panganganak po, yung hospital po na ano. Pero since meron naman na pong mga government po, yun nga po, lalakadin mo lang talaga siya, ganun. So, at least aware ka na meron tayong, well, itinatayong at pinatutupad sana na universal healthcare system. So, hospital, whether dun mismo sa siyudad natin or uh, isa sa mga national hospitals dito sa NCR. Yes, po. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Sen. Aimee. 
Yes, yes, kumusta sa Quezon City uh, dahil pabalik-balik ako dyan. May itatanong lang ako, baka may nakakaalam sa ating resource speakers, pati sa chairwoman. Noong uh, 2021, nagdeklara ng uh, Executive Order 141 si Presidente Duterte uh, saying that adolescent pregnancy was a national priority. Uh, may we hear from any of the resource speakers if anything came of that? Uh, Salamat, dahil sa, uh, alam natin yung problema, no? from QC hanggang sa mga liblib na probinsya, northern Mindanao hanggang sa Cordillera. May nangyari ba doon? Kasi yung EO141 was much applauded by uh, health and education groups dahil nga, for the first time, kinilala ito bilang national development issue. May nangyari ba doon? Maliban sa batas? Ang siguro pinakamagandang sumagot dyan ay uh, si, si Yusek uh, Tapales. Para po sa Popcom, ano sir? Uh, we are from the Council for the Welfare sorry, of Children. The uh, honorable Dahil sir. ilan kayo sa mga agencies who sounded the alarm yes, na sir. maaring yung EO na tinatanong ni Sen Ami ang tugon. So please, uh, updates on the EO. Madam Chair, we, we are aware of that EO and it was very much loaded when it came out. Uh, for the Council for the Welfare of Children, our reaction when that EO came out was to prioritize the, uh, to ensure that the uh, uh, a bill or measures uh, addressing adolescent pregnancy will be included in our 19th child uh, legislative agenda. Pero, so, teka, Jello, di ba? Yes. Pumasok ka lang nung, pumasok lang si Jello nung uh, August. Yes, uh, Your Honor. 2021 hanggang 2023. Mahigit dalawang taon to yes. uh, in place bago ka pumasok. Yes, Your Honor. Ano sabi? Ano din uh, nagawa maliban sa pagpaprioritize sa listahan? Your Honor, for the other agency, I'm not aware. But as in so far as the CW is concerned, we included the Adolescent Pregnancy Bill in our legislative agenda for the 18th and 19th Congress. And when we attended the UN Con Committee on the Rights of the Child last November, uh, September 2022, we also mentioned that executive uh, order. But of course, uh, uh, suggesting the need for a legislation that, like the ones proposed by the honorable sponsors because that will seal the deal and will really cause the implementation of a national law and, and its localization at the ground level, Your Honor. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, apropos of this, I suspect that nothing much came of the executive order between us girls. We know na natabuna na to ng uh, iba't ibang problema ng COVID, tapos yung economic issues arising from to COVID, parang hindi siya na napagtuunan ng sapat na pansin. So, eto nga, nag-aalala ako, nandyan yan, eh, sulat tayo ng sulat, wala nangyayari. I'm also concerned that uh, as an offshoot of what occurred with uh, the well-intentioned uh, EO 141 there is uh, there is a wide there's widespread anathema uh, against creating new councils so medyo kabado ako dun sa council na sinasabi natin baka as a second option uh, nariyan na nga yung mga executive order at iba at iba pang uh, pagkakakilala nitong problema natin baka pwede rin task force na muna Kasi kahit pa paano, less budget yon at saka a uh, task force presupposes that it will be in existence six months to two years lang hanggang masog po yung problema. E mukha naman nababawasan, baka task force yung naaangkop, not a permanent council. Just rethinking my bill given uh, what Yusek has stated and what we have observed. Thank you po. Salamat, Sen Aimee. Uh, very well taken. Uh, papasok pa naman tayo sa period of amendments, including committee amendments. At bilang uh, si Sen Aimee ay isa sa mga authors ng ating bills, it's uh, very well worth considering. Baka magandang itanong din bukod sa CWC, itanong din sa DOH at saka sa POPCOM. Kung, uh, may, I'm sorry, uh, may, we should also ask the Department of Health and the Population Commission their own responses to the question of uh, Sen Aimee. Whatever happened to the EO? Yes, Sen Rafi. I fully agree with uh, Senator Aimee na dapat magkaroon tayo ng task force para i-monitor itong uh, EO-141 and other laws pertaining to the welfare of uh, the teenagers. Pero meron lang po sana ko suggestion, if you will allow me, uh, yung prevention ba sa teenage pregnancies. Uh, marami po ako nakikita ang butas na pwede natin tapalan para hindi na mangyari o mabawasan yung teenage pregnancies. Number one, it starts with uh, the school authorities. Yung mga estudyante dapat, 
uh, minomonitor yung paglabas. Kapag uh, school hours, they should not be allowed to go out, especially if these are high schools. And then, uh, number two, dapat minomonitor po yung mga sumusundo sa kanila. Kasi there are times na yung sumusundo sa kanila, yung pala yung mga maniligaw na nila, mas nakakatanda sa kanila, kuminsan, yung pala yung mga uh, tito nila na wala naman sa listahan, yung pala yung pagsamantalan nila sila. So, dapat nakaregister doon sa school kung sino yung sundo ng bata. At kapag hindi yun na, na, nasa listahan, then dapat tatanungin kung sino ka, bakit ikaw nagsusundo, and then tatanungin din yung bata kung willing ba siyang sumama doon. Etc. And then number three, uh, number two po ay yung pagtitinda ng alak. Kasi napakarami na po akong karanasan sa programa ko sa Wanted sa Radyo na bubuntis yung uh, mga teenagers kasi sa inuman. So siguro po, uh, isasuggest ko, i-legislate natin to na magkaroon ng liquor license ang lahat ng mga tindahan na titinda ng liquor. Kapag nag-violate ka, nagbenta ka ng liquor sa minor, kakansila yung lisensya mo forever. Hindi ka na pwede magtinda ng liquor. Kapag nagpumilit ka, pwede ka makulong. And then, parusa pong uh, stiff penalty, doon po sa mga adults na bumibili ng alak in behalf of the minors, nangyayari po yan palagi. And then kasi po, pag lasing na po yung mga minors, ayun na, may nangyayari na sa kanila. In some cases, nagagang rape yung mga kabataan. Now, isa pa po, yung tinatawag na date rape na kung saan nabubuntis po yung mga kabataan, yung pong bang pagpumasok sa club, night club, dapat po monitor to make sure na sila po ay nasa tamang edad. And then kapag nanotice po sana ng mga empleyado sa restaurant, we should probably legislate this, meron silang karapatan na pigilan yung bang isang babae na pasuray-suray na at lasing na. Kasi po, doon na pagsasamantalahan eh, yung mga kababaihan, nalasing na sila, bibit-bitin ng kasama ni lalaki, ilalagay sa sakyan, and then diretso na po sa motel. So dapat po, meron tayong batas na kapag yung isang girl na medyo hindi niya na kaya yung kanyang sarili at lasing, then dapat doon papasok yung mga otoridad. Uh, so yung, uh, yung uh, sa establishments po, yung mga staff doon, they should alert the barangay or the PNP Women's and Children's Desk at kung uh, nakapagsalita pa yung, yung girl, tawagan yung kanyang parents or guardian. And then, isa pa po ay yung sa hotels and motels. Maraming mga maraming best na po ako nakatanggap ng reklamo na maraming minors na dinadala po doon sa hotel and motel na mga nakatanda sa kanila, nare-ray pa. Because hindi po inahanap pa ng ID yung mga pumapasok ng mga kababaihan doon. So, dapat po very strict tayo dyan, hinapan ng ID, at dapat may mga CCTV uh, sa registration pa lamang ng mga hotels and motels. At isa pa po, and lastly, dapat po yung distance ng mga hotels and motels, dapat strictly observed, dapat po hindi malapit sa school. Uh, merong, uh, in, in fact, sa Manila is 200 meters, so why not make it probably 400 meters away from the schools? to make sure na hindi po matutukso yung mga kabataan na tumakas at magipag inuman dahil malapit lang inuman, tara na, cutting classes muna tayo, inuman muna tayo doon, at kapag nalasing, may mangyari na. Those are just my suggestions, uh, Your Honor. And then siguro yung involved natin dito yung DILG at saka PNP Women's and Children's Desk. At sama yung sinabi ni Sen. I mean, I fully agree, meron tapat tayo bubuo na task force na para ma-implement to. Kasi meron tayong mga gandang batas, actually, to protect our children. Pero kulang sa implementation. That's why we need task force tulad na sinabi ni Sen. Aime, and I really agree. Yes, uh, Madam Thank you Sen. very much, uh, Sen. Rafi, before uh, yes. I call Sen. Aime again, the points are well taken of school authorities as partners of parents uh, and other stakeholders in uh, preventing uh, teenage pregnancy and extending social protection to teenage parents. And then, uh, yung... Uh, Pagtinda ng alak, if I remember correctly, there's even a required distance of liquor stores from schools and other uh, educational establishments. And uh, yung uh, shout-out sa mga clubs, hotels, motels, uh, it also reminds me of 
um, this Angela code for you know when when women are, for example, on uh, blind dates and at any point we feel unsafe, uh, there can be such mechanisms of uh, asking the the maitre d or, or or the irresponsible person there. Uh, the umano to, to call Angela, but it's actually a code to call a taxi para makaalis. Of course, these are for uh, usually for women of legal age, and we are focusing here on. Uh, Your not only uh, yes, and Rafi, a taxi, kundi ta tawagan po siguro yung authorities. Pagalimbawa, kahit na of age na yung babae, kung siya pasura-sura, hindi niya nakayang kanyang sarili, dapat responsibilidad po yun ng club o restaurant na tumawag sa autoridad. Tumawag po siguro sa uh, Wims and Children's Desk sa barangay and then kung nakapagsalita pa yung babae tawag niyo kanyang parents kung hindi then the authority should come in kasi doon po naging vulnerable yung mga kababaihan natin na nare-rape kasi baka mamaya date yun at nilagyan ng bas, nilagyan pampatulog nilagyan ng kung ano-ano pa yung alak and then pag nalasing na wala na sarili yung, yung babae dadalhin po sa motel at may mangyari na Thank you, Sen. Rafi. Sen Ako naman sasang-ayon lang kay uh, Sen. Tulfo pagkat uh, napakatagal kong gobernador. So, nakita ko na talagang umuubra ito. Matatakda yung tinatawag na crime clock o calendar, crime calendar. Alam mo na eh kung kailan magkakawalwalan. Kapag long weekend, may concert, mm -hmm. may gimmick, may malaking event, sa dami ng aming tourism efforts, nagkakawalwalan talaga pag panahon na yun. Pinagbabawal namin sa ordinansa noon yung pagbenta ng alcohol or any kind of spirits within a three-mile radius of the concert venue, including the school na nga. And uh, pinipinsala, pati yung uh, vendor natin, and all the adults who are present, pwedeng idamay-damay. Kasi nga, maraming, uh, uh, maraming mga mama na paaligid, paaligid-aligid sa mga kabataan paggabi. Uh, Ikalawa, meron ring kung may crime clock, meron ring crime map eh. Kaya medyo alam mo na kung saan dapat. So, pinagbabawal yung pagbenta ng alcohol, ng tabako within the school area, uh, within the vicinity, and also dun sa mga establishments na hotel, restaurant, bar, eh, dapat talaga may bantay at may ilaw sa bandang CR, dressing room, back stairs, back exit. Alam na natin yun. Pinagdaanan natin lahat yan. Kaya, uh, nagtataka rin ako kung bakit na hindi pa rin na isasatupad itong uh, very obvious uh, local measures. Perhaps we can uh, impose this also on uh, the LGUs and even conduct a uh, uh, an awarding, an award for the LGUs who are highly compliant and immediately see a decrease in their adolescent pregnancies. It works. I uh, guarantee you, tested and proven po namin. Madam Chair? Uh, naisip ko tuloy before, Sen Rafi, what? naisip ko tuloy, Sen Aimi, that uh, when, you said, when you mentioned awardings, perhaps itong mga agenda natin about preventing teenage pregnancy, among others, uh, pwedeng i-consider yeah. din ng DILG sa mga uh, seal of, seal of good uh, house, uh, yes and seal of good governance uh, awards processes. Sa Ay, alam mo naman, Pilipino style, mas gusto natin na nanalo ng contest kesa sa pinaparusahan. <laughs> sure, no problem po. Yes, and Rafi. Madam Chair, uh, again, I would reiterate uh, the need for us, for our country, uh, for, for uh, the uh, restaurants and uh, bars that sells liquor to secure a liquor license. Kasi sa ngayon nato, wala tayong tinatawag na liquor license. So, dapat uh, i-require to the LGUs na lahat ng mga natitinda ng alak, kumuha mo ng liquor license and they should be well screened to make sure na uh, sila ay mga legit na mga tindahan at sila ay hindi magbebenta ng mga alak sa mga minors. At kapag sila ay nag-violate, kakansilahin yung kanilang liquor license and they can no longer sell liquors forever, ever again. Yun yung pinakamatinding parusa. At kapag, at kapag uh, bukod pa dyan, pinagtinda na matanda sa minor, dapat makulong. Kasi po, doon nangyari yung kalokohan. Eh. Yung mga matatanda, utusan ng minor, bumili ng ala para sa kanila and then maglasingan yung mga minor and then paglasing na yung mga minor, sila-sila na gumagawa ng hindi tama nagagang rape yung mga kabatakad mga dalagita and it led to teen pregnancies. Salamat, Sen. Rafi. 
Uh, yeah, man, Aksen, I mean. Uh, nandito po ba ang, is Popcom here? No. Could we ask Dr. Bellimac uh, for DOH to respond for the for the committee's enlightenment to the question of Sen uh, Even though it's not a law, an EO is still an EO, so uh, it should have some use uh, for our advocacy for our program. So please, Dr. Bellimac. Uh, magandang umaga po, uh, honorable Madam Chair, and thank you so much for this opportunity to give an update on that EO one four one. Uh, the PAPCOM, of course, Department of Health was involved, developed the Comprehensive Action Plan to Prevent Adolescent Pregnancy in Philippines with a timeline of 2021 until 2024. No? And it has five uh, major strategic areas, where uh, one of which is very important to the work of the Department of Health, the strategic area on access to adolescent sexual and reproductive health, um, ARSH services po, no? And uh, in this um, um, ARSH framework, in this strategic area, the Department of Health had made strides in making sure that our health facilities po will be, um, will be able to provide uh, adolescent-friendly health services. So the Department of Health uh, continued its certification and capability building program to um, accredit facilities on adolescent-friendly health facilities. As of current, po, uh, there are over 700 facilities which are accredited by the department as um, health-friendly uh, uh, facility. And secondly, po, the Department of Health uh, developed a playbook, more of a operational guideline documents to local government units on how they can mount a multi-sectoral community-based um, program that is responsive to the adolescent needs no? through the CADA network or the key assistance for developing adolescents. Uh, these are the major activities that the Department of Health uh, endeavored as part of the five strategic actions under that comprehensive action plan, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Dr. Bellimac. By any chance, were the... Uh comprehensive action plan and the playbook for LGUs uh, in response to, para lang ma-connect the dots natin in relation to Sen Aimee's question, were they by any chance in response to the, or as an outcome of the of the EO or uh, previous or, or parallel initiatives of DOH and POPCOM? And maybe you would like to consider uh, as you update the playbook, uh, to include some of the suggestions made of former Gov now and I me. So we, we take note of that, ma'am, as we are uh, embarking on integrating our work streams in the Department of Health. Okay. We are now working po on how we could um, improve on the standards of care for the primary health care facilities under the Universal Health Care Act. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this will be considered po in our continual work of revisiting that improving the standards of the primary health care facility now. Salamat, Dr. And Madam we, Chair? Uh, just, just one last sentence, okay. Rafi, before Sen Rafi. Uh, so, hindi sila konektado sa EO? Uh, or or were, were they separate but parallel efforts? Or were they uh, a next step uh, evolving from the EO? Um, um, alamin ko po, ma'am, okay, because... Okay, no problem po. Just to, to also complete our answer yes, to the question of Sen Aimee. Salamat, Doctor. Yes, Sen Rafi. I appreciate yung sinabi ni Dr. Berimap na adolescent pregnancy-friendly facilities. Pero sana, pag-isipan nyo rin yung prevention. Kasi meron dun mga nabubuntis na hindi naman dapat. So, why not focus as well dun sa prevention? Kasi nag nagpo-focus kayo ngayon sa adolescent pregnancy-friendly facilities, kung magastos kayo, naglalagay kayo ng mga pasilidad para dun sa mga batang nagbubuntis. However, wala kayong atang ginagawang steps to prevent teenage pregnancies, unwanted teenage pregnancies especially, yung na-mention kanina. Excuse me, Sen Rafi. Actually, ang, uh, unless I'm mistaken, ang narinig kong binanggit ni Dr. Bellimac was adolescent-friendly health facilities. So baka we can ask him okay. kung uh, kasama na doon yung tinatanong ni Sen Rafi na prevention of adolescent pregnancy. 
uh, Madam Chair, uh, Sen Rafi, uh, we agree that uh, the social determinants of health really are very important in the prevention of adolescent pregnancies. So that's why we are working with the Department of Education and uh, our colleagues from DepEd are here on implementing for the comprehensive sexuality education and how uh, we could better improve the referrals from the facility to our uh, from the schools to our health facilities. Po. Okay, si sino po uh, anybody can answer this. Sino yung nag-implement uh, nitong EO141? Ano to? DILG, PNP, DOH, DepEd? Uh, Sen Rafi, uh, we can hear from uh, Executive Director Rom Dongueto of PLCPD. Sino po ba yung implementing agency sa EO141? Thank, thank you po, Madam Chair. Uh, there is a national action plan uh, that uh, was produced under the executive order. Unfortunately, uh, Madam Chair, wala pong masyadong nangyari dito sa National Action Plan na ito. In fact, uh, we are expecting that the Department of Education will respond to the EO by uh, expediting the rollout of the comprehensive sexuality education. Unfortunately, until now, hindi po ito na-implement ng buhok. So maybe, Sen Rafi, yun, yung kay E.D. Rom na rin yung sagot dun kay Sen Aimee kanina, mukhang hindi na ipatupad yung EO141 and not fully. At baka yun na rin yung sagot kay Dr. Bellimac. You don't have to search whether connected yung initiatives yung sa EO141. Mukhang hindi nagpapatuloy. And later, Sen Rafi, we can also hear from yeah. Director Esplana Alama dun sa DepEd and Comprehensive S Sexual Siguro, Education. Uh, sexuality Siguro, babalik tayo sa sinabi ni Sen Aimee, uh, Madam Chair, uh, yung magkakaroon siguro ng task force para ma-implement itong EO-141. Siguro joint task force kasama yung DepEd, PNP, uh, DOH, uh, any other agencies na makatulong dito. At isa pang katanungan ko, kasi karamihan sa mga kabataan na pregnant, nahiya sila. Uh, ayaw nilang lumantad dahil uh, yung kanilang parents magagalit, yung kay kaibigan nila, yung, yung publiko, sila ay ibabash, etc. So they keep it to themselves and sometimes pinapalaglag nila yung bata. So dapat meron din tayong isang agency na tumututok dyan. Pag yung bata nandyan na, nabuntis na, wala natin magawa, then tulungan na lang natin. And that girl can call an agency to help her out hanggang sa siya yung mga anak. Kaysa naman, kaysa naman mapunta sa abortion. Salamat, Sen. Rafi. Well, uh, dahil yung EO141 na issue nung nakarang administrasyon, di, sa pagkaalam ko, hindi pa naman vinoid ng kasalukuyan, but it may or may not be um, sustained uh, as an EO. Baka maglalabas ng bagong EO yung uh, si Presidente ngayon. But at least, we're not starting from scratch. Meron nga tayong mga bills natin dito sa Senado uh, na approve na nga uh, sa committee level sa House of Representatives. At meron pa rin tayong uh, Comprehensive Action Plan, valid till year 2025, tama po ba, or 2026? Ah, sorry, 20, hanggang 2024, we have the playbook for LGUs, and we have, uh, ayun, yung, yung National Action Plan nga, uh, under EO141. So okay, we can Madam Chair, isa pa. pick up some of so, moving forward. Yes, and Rafa. Sabi po ni uh, Mr. Romeo Dungeto na wala siyang alam kung sino nag implement nito or sino agency. So, sayang lang po itong EO141. So, habang nag-antay tayo na baka merong ipalabas na EO si uh, President BBM, nakahanin tulad nito, dapat somebody should implement this. Otherwise, ba't pa nagkaroon ng EO kung inutil lang pala ito, hindi lang pala na gagampanan. So, meron dapat isang agency or agencies na mag-implement nito. And sino po yun? Any volunteers? Yes, yeah. uh, and maybe we'll, we'll call in Popcom also because I stand corrected, online pala ang, ang Popcom. Uh, maybe you, Popcom, you could also give the committee your position on the bills we are hearing kasi meron din ditong nakatukoy na mga implementing agencies uh, in response to the question of Sen Rafi. So I'd like to call on uh, Sir Takardon, please, for Popcom. Uh, Nakamute yata kayo, Sir. And I stand corrected. I sorry. I thought you were absent earlier. Online pala kayo. Paki on po yung audio nyo. Wala pa rin, sir.
mute pa rin, sir. Baka, well, hindi ako techie, pero pag ganitong problema, baka pwedeng mag-log out muna, tapos log in ulit. Tama ba yun? Yung suggestion. <laughs> baka mamali pa ako. Baka makasama pa. Sir, yes. Okay, so let's wait for Popcom to come back online. Uh, Ma'am, uh, Director Esplana Alama, maybe you'd like to come in at this point uh, regarding comprehensive sexuality education bilang isang preventive measure din and also add to the response to the question of Sen. Rafi regarding the implementing agencies. Good morning, Madam Chair, Sen Senator Risa, and good morning, Sir Rafi, Senator Rafi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, please allow me to read the position paper of the DepEd kasi nandun po yung sagot doon sa ano. Sige po. Please proceed. Yes po. Senate Bill Numbers 372, 651, and 1209 come at the most crucial time in our national life. As noted in all three bills, there has been an alarming rise Teenage pregnancy cases and even some cases involving preteen mothers in recent years. Data for school year 2020-2021 from the DepEd's basic, basic education information system show that early marriage and adolescent pregnancy are among the major causes of school dropout. The same data also show that a significant number of these cases occur among junior high school students in the public school system. Uh, section 6 of the above-mentioned Senate bills titled Age and Development Appropriate Comprehensive Sexuality Education will allow the Department of Education to play a key role in advancing the cause of adolescent pregnancy prevention and sexuality education. This includes taking the lead in developing the school curriculum, educational standards, modules, and materials to promote uh, CSE in schools. The same uh, Senate bills are correct in emphasizing the inclusion of age and development development appropriate topics related to human sexuality, adolescent reproductive health, health and hygiene, and gender-related concerns, among others, will further strengthen initiatives to prevent adolescent pregnancy. Likewise, institutionalizing CSE by making it a compulsory part of the basic education curriculum and standardizing it at all levels will surely help break the persistent taboo on discussing adolescent sexuality and reproductive health and ease the social stigma attached to it. Safeguards against non-compliance as proposed in these bills are consistent with the need to ensure that this proposed law will achieve its goal of preventing teen age pregnancy and protecting adolescent mothers. Ensuring that CSE is medically accur accurate, rights-based, inclusive, and non-discriminatory towards LGBT adolescents is also the correct approach as it will allow basic education learners to get the right information gain a better understanding of their rights and reduce the discrimination against and even bullying of fellow learners who become pregnant or belong to marginalized groups such as LGBT and indigenous peoples. And since the department has the expertise on curriculum related matters, however, it wants to make sure that it will take the lead role in the formulation review and revisions of the curriculum related to the CSE to be undertaken by the Adolescent Pregnancy Prevention Council. This is apart from the duties and functions assigned to the DepEd in Section 22 implementation structure of the Senate bills. So in sum, the DepEd is fully supportive of the intent and objectives of the proposed, uh, proposed law that is to prevent teenage pregnancy, provide support for teen teenage mothers, provide protection for young girls, and provide and allow pregnant adolescents to continue their education despite the situation in which they find themselves. And for the information of everybody, since 2021 po, uh, nakakaroon po ng CSE uh, uh, rollout to all the regions. Meron po tayong mga rollouts on how this will be implemented. Kaya lang po, hindi po lahat ay nasa saturate kasi nga nagkaroon po tayo ng pandemic. But it is an ongoing at uh, activity for the DepEd. Opo. So, Salam. Madam Senator, uh, the DepEd will be submitting the final proposal once it's vetted and signed by our VP Secretary. Thank you very much. Salamat, Director Esplana Alama. Yun mismong 
puntong binanggit nyo ang gusto kong i-follow up. So, in 20, speaking of kanina, pinag-usapan natin with Sen. Rafi yung EO, no? In 2018, DepEd issued DepEd Order number 31, mm -hmm. series of 2018, outlining the guidelines yes, of the implementation of the Comprehensive Sexuality Education. At yung said guidelines, nag institute ng uh, regular monitoring at reporting para sa overall progress. Binanggit nyo nga po yung rollout. Ano po yung current status ng rollout? It's still ongoing po. Ongoing po yung rollout. Uh, it binababa po namin yan sa mga regional offices. Pababa na rin po sa SDOs or schools division offices. And then, yung SDOs din po yung nagbababa sa mga school levels. So, would you say po na 100% of DepEd schools uh, nag-integrate na ng CSE sa curriculum nila? At kung hindi, ilan po yung mga eskwelahan natin na successfully na-implement na itong uh, specific provision ng RPRHE? 100% na po ma'am integrated na yan sa curriculum uh, simula po ng na-rollout yung CSE. Actually, kahit po hindi, uh, hindi mag-rollout ng CSE, meron po tayo sa mga subject areas na kalagay na din doon uh, explaining or discussing about sexuality. It, it is included in the MAPE subject, MAPE uh, Music Arts and PE and Health. Uh, meron din sa edukasyon sa pagpapakatao. But then basically, itong CSE iba po. So integrated po yan sa mga subjects natin sa Dicol Basic Education. And Director, if you say 100% integrated, how many schools are we talking about we that are, are successfully implementing this provision? Uh, 27 million schools. <laughs> Maybe 27,000. Oh, 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 27,000 okay, schools. Po. Almost all the schools in in the country po. See, because it, uh, it is mandated for us to implement this, talagang wala silang choice but to implement. Uh, I, then, uh, yung manner lang siguro, uh, uh, we do not know kung anong nangyayari sa baba. Salamat. You're always one step ahead of me, Director. Salamat po. I appreciate it. Uh, Napaka-proactive ng resource person ng DepEd sa hearing na ito. Kasi I was going to, yes, I'll be with you soon, San Rafi. I was just about to say na kung 100%, so quantity yon yes. the manner, yung quality, yun yung susunod na itatanong natin. Salamat, ma'am. Uh, San Rafi. Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, Tanawin ko si Director, ano po yung mga ini-implement nyo? Uh, action plan to prevent teenage pregnancy? Can hindi you give us an example? Hindi po actually, Senator, action plan. Ayon po ay mga workshops on how the policy should be implemented and then paano ini-integrate yung mga topics or uh, subjects na nagdi-discuss ng uh, okay. teenage pregnancy. Yeah. Embedded uh, yan sa subjects. I appreciate that, Madam. Pero ang sa akin sana... May kasabi na easier said than done. Mas maganda siguro talaga meron tayong action kaysa naman yung tuturo ng estudyante, ganitong gawin mo, ganit, huwag mo gawin to, ito yung gagawin mo. Yes, maganda yon. Pero dapat sinasama din natin ang action tulad ng mga suggestion ko. Kasi kung puro salita lang tayo, puro daktak, I'm sorry for the word, wala mangyari, na, wala tayong ma, ma, mapiprevent masyado na uh, mga kabataan na mabubuntis. Isa pa siguro dyan, isama nyo sa education, yung, yung Madam Chair, yung sa social media, Yung know your clients, KYC. Siguro, you, get, you should get in touch with uh, uh, TikTok, FB, Facebook. And then meron tong bago, Madam Chair. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of this. Bigo, Alua, OnlyFans. Tumatawa kayo. Maraming, oh, tumatawa si Madam <laughs> Doktor. Maraming nabubuntis dito, Madam Chair. Because they explore. Kasi pagpapasok ka dito, si Bigo, Alua, on the fans, then mag, mag display ka ng talent mo. And then yung mga lalaki, mga matatanda, kadalasan, ng mga hangol, kung sa Bisaya, takaw na takaw, eh, utos, sige nga, maghubad ka nga, sige nga, magpakita ka ng ganito mo. And then later on, yayain yung bata na magkipagkita sa kanila, nabubuntis yung bata. So, so siguro... So, natin yay... nakikita, Sen Rafi, yung connection ng mga iba't ibang advocacy at batas natin. Like, OSAEC, Halimbawa ng OSAIC yung sinasabi niyo, Online Sexual Abuse exactly. and Exploitation of Children Law. Yeah. Na ipasa na po natin. So now, uh, you're pointing out a way na konektado yon dun sa yes. ating prevention of teenage pregnancy. To, to DepEd siguro, DepEd and then uh, PNP, NBI, makipag, uh, ano siguro, makipag-tie up. Mag-tie up sila para uh, kausapin o makipag-communicate dito sa mga nabanggit ko, mga online uh, page or uh, website na para... Uh, yung mga kabataan uh, na pumapasok dito, hinga ng ID to make sure na they're adults, they're of age. May I add, Senator uh, Rafi? Uh, yes, uh, Director Esplana Alama. Uh, Before we go back to Carmela. Thank yes, you. Uh, 
yung sinasabi po ni Senator Rafi ay totoo lang sa syudad. Pero hindi po yun yung totoo pagdating sa kanayunan because some of the some of the cases of teenage pregnancy ay napipilitan lang talagang humanap na ng makakatubang sa buhay dahil sa kahirapan. So, dito papasok yung tulong ng LGUs pagdating sa livelihood and then sa ibang mga basic services ng gobyerno because uh, wala hong motels at hotels. Wala, mahina rin ang mga signal sa sa la, ano sa mga kanayunan pero uh, kadamihan din sa mga nag, nabubuntis ng maaga ay galing din dito sa mga lugar na ito. So, isa pong pa, uh, factor dyan ay yung Okay. Thank you, Director. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, before I go back to Sen. Rafi, so, and matatalakay pa natin yan kasama ng mga uh, representante ng mga leagues at iba pang LGU. So, Sen. Rafi, before uh, we go back to Carmela. Yes, Sen. Rafi. Okay, economic issue, I agree with uh, the Director. On the other hand, I beg to disagree. Yung sinasabi mo, hindi nangyari yung, uh, yung sa online, uh, because of the online uh, mga website, wala na bubuntis. No. Kasi po, marami na po akong natatanggap ng mga sumbong. Uh, pwede naman kahit na kaya noon uh, sa probinsya, open naman po silang pumasok dito sa Bigo, sa Alua, only fans, and then may pagkita sila sa mga kalalakihan na uh, nagiging customer nila o nagiging uh, regulars nila. So, and th there are times na pumupunta pa sa Manila yung mga kababayan from the province na papadalang po ng pamasahe ng mga sponsor nila na client nila dito sa Bigo, Alua, OnlyFans. Pagdating dito sa Manila, nabubuntis na pagbalik ng probinsya. So talagang dapat uh, all the authorities involved, DepEd, DOH, ano, PNP, uh, lahat na siguro na para kausapin tong mga online websites no, na to make sure na hindi basta-basta nakapasok yung mga bata. Especially sa Bigo. Nakakita ka na ng Bigo, Madam Chair? Hindi pa Okay, sa Bigo, eh dito yung mga kabataan, mga dalaga, dalagita, pwede magpakita ng talent. Magsayaw, kumanta, magpakita ng legs, kuminsan sabi ng customer, sige nga, hindi lang legs, pakita ka pa, some more, some more, some more, hanggang sa, you know. So dapat meron tinatawag yung uh, Know Your Client, KYC, siguro kakausapin natin itong mga website na ito, yung mga provider, service providers na ito. Salamat, Sen. Rafi. As we did dun sa iba pa nating mga uh, batas tulad ng anti-OSAIC law or even the expanded anti-trafficking in persons law. So, but, and the best test of these interventions ay kung paano sila nag impact sa mga aktual na adolescents. So, at this point, pagkatapos natin marinig itong uh, mga initial proposals, balikan natin si Carmela. Carmela, um, baka gusto mong uh, i-share pa sa komite yung kwento mo, no? yung statement mo. Okay lang po, basahin ko po lahat. Sure. Um, bago po ako magsimila, gusto ko lang po magsabihin. Uh, ako po si Carmela Bondok. Um, may anak na po ako, teenage mother. Isa rin po ako sa mga kabataan na humarap na maaga sa responsibilidad. Dahil sa isang desisyong biglaan at hindi pinag-iisipan. Uh, labing pitong taong gulang pa lamang po ako nung ako ay naging isang ganap na magulang. Hinarap ko ang mahirap na sitwasyong ito. Hirap na hindi lamang pinansyal, physical, pati na rin ang pagganap sa pagiging magulang. Imbis na namamasyal, naglalaro o nag-aaral, ako ay puyat dahil sa pag-aalaga ng aking anak. Kasabay pa nun, ay hindi may iwasan ang diskriminasyon sa paligid. Ang mga bulong-bulungan nagbibigay ng panghuhusga sa isang desisyon na napakahirap. Kaya naman, mas tinibayan ko ang aking sarili at mas nilakasan ko ang aking loob na harapin ang lahat. Um, gusto ko pong pag-usapan ng ilang aspeto ng adolescent pregnancy batay sa aking experience bilang batang ina. Wala tayo, wala tayo sa batas kung hindi natin didinggin ang boses ng... Ang boses ng mga naging batang inang katulad ko. Lahat tayo ay may karapatang ipahayag ang ating seksualidad at magpasya tungkol sa kanina tayo makikipagrelasyon o makikipagtalik. Sana ay maintindihan niyo po na may kakayahan ng mga kabataang tulad ko na may mag, na magdesisyon base sa kung ano ang safe para sa amin. Ngunit kailangan po namin ng suporta ng batas kagaya nito. Ang adolescent pregnancy prevention, ang kailangan po namin ay stigma-free, support gaya ng edukasyon at serbisyo. Una, importante po para sa amin ang cultural, culturally sensitive age and development appropriate adolescent reproductive health curriculums. Edukasyon ng tama 
nang gagabay sa amin. Impormasyon na galing sa mga health professionals, impormasyong tama, impormasyong hindi pagkakait sa amin ng dahil sa pangusga. Edukasyon na nagbibigay ng dignidad sa aming desisyon para sa sarili. Naniniwala kami na kung kami ay mabibigyan ng wasto at tamang impormasyon tungkol dito, uh, tungkol po sa sex, sa pakikipagrelasyon, sa, at ang mga konsekwenses po ng safe and unsafe sex, kung paano may iwasan ng sakit ay kaya naming magdesisyon ng tama at responsable. Servisyong magbibigay sa amin ng karapatang mamili na para sa amin base sa impormasyong tama. Servisyong kumikilala sa aming kakayahan, maintindihan ng aming mga sarili at katawan. Servisyong kumikilala sa aming dignidad, Servisyong base sa aming karapatang pantao at mga servisyong kabilang ang buong hanay ng servisyo ng gobyerno gaya ng prenatal, antenatal and postnatal care. Ang servisyong dapat ay hindi uh, hindi nagdi-discriminate at servisyong confidential. Servisyong hindi pagkakait sa karap ang karapatan namin na sa tama at wastong uh, impormasyon na kailangan namin para ma-prevent ang future unintended pregnancies na walang takot at diskriminasyon, stigmatization at violence. Malaki ang aking pasasalamat sa Diyos dahil swerte ako sa mga taong nakapaligid sa akin lalo sa pamilya ko. Tumigil man ako sa pag-aaral ay muli akong nakabalik upang makapagtapos ng kolehiyo. Kasalukuyan ako po ay isang youth development assistant sa Quezon City LGU at ditong Desyembre ay nakapagtapos na po ng kolehiyo. Mahirap sukuan ng pangal at hindi ko ito magagawa kung hindi dahil sa suporta ng mga nakapaligid sa akin. Nakayanan kong harapin ang hamon ng buhay dahil may nakuha akong suporta. Ilang nais ko po para sa lahat at sinasabi natin na ito ang isang, ay isang national social emergency kaya importante ang suporta at tulong po mula sa gobyerno. Para sa mga mambabatas at sa lahat ng mga nasa posisyon na narito po ngayon, sana po ay magkaroon tayo ng batas at tulong para sa mga kabataan na nasa ganitong sitwasyon. Isang batas na sumusuporta gaya ng kahalintulad sa pagmamahal ng isang magulang na muling magbabangon at magtatayo sa kanyang anak at sa kanyang pagkakadapa po. Para po kasi sa akin, nung time po na yun, um, yun po yung kagaya po, nag, nag umpisa po kasi ako sa Quezon City, Nung nag-speech po ako doon, kaharap ko po yung mga teenage pregnancy po, teenage mom po. Sinasabi ko po sa kanila, hindi po ako proud na nasa halapan nila ako ngayon, nagsasalita bilang teenage mom. Um, gusto ko lang po sila encourage na hindi po porket nagbuntis ng maaga or nagkaanak ng maaga, e doon na po natatapos yung buhay nila. Ni-encourage ko po sila na magtuloy po ulit sa pag-aaral para po sa kabinabukasan po nila at para po doon sa anak nila. Yun lang po. Salamat po. Naku, salamat sa iyo. Carmela, sa pagbabahagi ng kwento mo na humarap ka at sumaibayo sa, sa hamon na tinanggap mo at uh, pinakinabangan yung tulong at suporta ng mga taong nagmamahal sa'yo. Ina-encourage mo yung mga kapwa mong uh, naging teenage mom na magpatuloy sa pag-aaral at magtapos, maghanap ng trabaho tulad ng makahulog ang trabaho tulad ng ginagawa mo ngayon sa QC Youth Development Office at itaguyod yung anak mo, yung sarili mong pamilya uh, rin. Uh, Na-appreciate po talaga ng aming komite yan at mabuhay ka, Carmela. Salamat po, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair? At this, uh, yes, uh, Sen. Rafi, before before I go back to Sen. Rafi, uh, after Sen. Rafi, we'll go back to Popcom. Baka pwede din kayong mag-comment sa ating bills at mag-responde din dun sa kwento ni Carmela. Sen. Rafi. Madam Chair, napakaganda po yung mga sinabi ni Ms. Carmela at ako po'y sumasaludo sa iyo. Uh, nicely said. Uh, wala pong words na ma-describe ko na paghanga sa iyo. Kahanga-hanga ka. Uh, Doon sa sinabi niya, sana magkaroon ng suporta mula sa gobyerno yung mga nalalagay sa katulad niya. Uh, mukhang wala ata tayo noon. So, it's about time na magkaroon tayo niyan. Siguro meron naman tayong DSWD and LGUs na pwede nilang pagsabihan kasi in some cases, nahiya po sila eh. Ngayon yung sabi nga nila na, na pagtatawanan sila o nababash sa social media, kinukondem agad sila, hinusgahan. So, meron dapat isang agency na pwede silang tawagan, pwede silang tawagan na agad-agad magbigay sa kanilang support o support group na iyon ang lalapit sa iba't ibang klaseng agencies na meron ating gobyerno na tumutulong sa mga uh, kabataan na nabubuntis ng maaga. At ito pong mga ahensya ay pupulungin nga either sa isang uh, 
uh, Teenage Pregnancy Prevention Council o sa isang task force kung ano pong mapagkasundoan ng komiteng irekomenda sa Senado sa committee report. So, uh, Mr. Takardon, Sir Takardon ng Popcom, are you back online? Yes po. Yes, sir. Would you like... Yes, please. Uh, the committee is waiting to hear yung position. Kayo po yung uh, una yatang uh, ahensya na nag ng concern dito sa sinabi ni Carmela na national and social emergency ang teenage pregnancy sa atin. We'd like to hear your position on the bills and any response to Carmela's story. You have the floor, sir. Salamat po, Madam Chair, and uh, good morning din po, Senator Rafi. Um, in response lang po doon sa status po ng uh, EO 141, as you mentioned po kanina, um, Madam Chair, ang Commission on Population and Development po ay isa sa mga nanguna sa pagsusulong at uh, nag-ingay po ano, na i-considera as a national social emergency yung um, issue of uh, teenage uh, pregnancy, lalo na nga po doon sa mga minors. And uh, fortunately po, we were, we were able ano, to... Um, um, the, the President, uh, the director was able to support the, the call uh, through the issuance of EO141. Uh, and under po ng EO141, I um, in, in encourage po yung whole of government approach to address po yung uh, issue. Ang pinaka-secretariat po niyan at ang pinaka-main po sana ano, na mag-monitor of the implementation ng EO141 ay yung Human Development Poverty uh, Reduction Cluster. Uh, ng cabinet po sana um, uh, being uh, pro uh, provided ng secretariat by the NAPSI or National Poverty Commission. Pero under the um, EO4, ang Commission on Population and Development ang nataasan din po na gumawa nung magbalangkas ng um, comprehensive plan of action. And uh, we were able to do that po, no? naipasa po natin um, as soon as naipasa po yung uh, na-issue yung EO141 at uh, nabanggit po kanina ng ibang mga resource person na eh, ang ating comprehensive plano na action po ay um, meron pong lima ano, na estratehiya na promote Una po dyan yung comprehensive sexuality education ano, na napagpapatingkad lang naman din po ito no? yung sa provision po ng RH law na dapat ay implement po ang uh, CSC through the Department of Education and other uh, and the entire educational uh, sector. Pero in-expand po natin yan na dapat ang CSE rin ay um, um, tumugon din ano, sa pangangailangan ng edukasyon ng mga magulang. No, kasi as we all know po, yung mga magulang din po ang um, may primary responsibility rin ano, to uh, guide ano, yung mga adolescent uh, children and other adults who have influence over the sexual uh, behavior of young, young people. Especially the men, ano, yung, yung grupo po ng mga kalalakihan. Kasi um, in, sa mga usapin po ng teenage pregnancy, lagi na lang po na pagtutuunan ay mga kababaihan. Ano? Pero uh, na-mention po ano ni Senator Rappi na malaking papel po um, ang rason ay yung mga behaviors po ng mga kalalakihan natin. So intensify po din natin yung education sa mga uh, kalalakihan. Pangalawang uh, estratehiya po, nabanggit po ni Dr. Benny Macanina from DOH, yung pagpapatingkad po at pagpapalawak ng access ng mga bata, anong mga lalo na ng mga minors, even without um, parental consent po sana no, sa um, mga family planning methods. Ano, kasi uh, may mga realidad po tayo kasi yung kinukonsidera dyan. Una, uh, base po sa datos, marami na pong kapataan ng mga sexually active na nangangailangan na po ng protection from adolescent pregnancy. No? Katulad po ng kwento nga po ni Carmela. Pangalawa po, um, lalo na sa uh, interest po ng PAPCOM, yung repeat pregnancy din po is a reality. No? Hindi lang po minsan po napupuntis ang mga kabataan but nauulit po to dahil sa lack of access to um, family planning. And uh, they, they require po kasi there are legal, legal barriers po for them to, to access. That's why isa po yan sa mga uh, sinusuportahan namin na bahagi po ng panukalang um, batas po sa Senate at saka sa House of uh, Representative. Pangatlo po ay yung pagpapatingkad ng mekanismo ng uh, pag-prevent po natin ng mga sexual abuse, and um, violence against women and children. Kasi po, uh, nakikita po natin, ano, sa base po sa datos natin, medyo may problema po tayo sa reporting. Um, yung datos po nang nababanggit po natin na uh, 10 to 14 actually came from civil registry and vital statistics. Those are records na nandun po doon na that would sana indicate ano, yung incidence of uh, sexual abuse. And we all know na yung even before the law, yung 12 uh, and below, statutory rape na po yun. So mga criminal acts na po talaga yung ano na yun. And yet, wala po tayong nababalitaan na ng pro-prosecute. So there's really a problem in the, the reporting. Kaya isa po sa mga action na ginawa din po namin proactively is to talk with the interagency na or technical working group on violence against women and children 
uh, para tignan yung posibilidad na magamit itong mga records na to to at least ano, report yung incidents at uh, maalarma yung mga uh, nagpapatupad po ng ng batas man lang no para alam nila na may mga nang, nangyayari po tong mga uh, incidents na to. We have the record but uh, wala pong na uh, ano eh nang na, na, nangyayari po talaga. So that's something po na gusto nating mapatingkad. And lastly, yung nabanggit po kanina din yung ating colleague from DepEd, yung social economic um condition ay dapat ma-improve because based po sa data, um poverty and lack of education is a function of teenage pregnancy. Basin po sa data, mas marami pong napubuntis, ano, more than 10% actually sa rural. At uh, sa mga reyon na uh, medyo may um, socioeconomically um, uh, poor po. No? So th that means talagang uh, yung socioeconomic condition po nila ay kailangan din pong in-address. At kasama po rito sa um, approach na to, yung nabanggit po ni Senator Rappi, yung mga pag-reduce po ng mga non-sexual risky behaviors. No? Yung uh, mga drinking, um, engagement nila sa mga... Uh, smoking and uh, yung pagtatambay-tambay, mga ganun pong ano, um, intervention. Uh, actually, yung curfew po, ano, napag-aralan po natin that uh, it has um, ano po talaga, effectiveness in terms of curtailing. And we have seen actually po ano, during the pandemic na hindi lumabas yung mga kabataan at nalesen yung kanilang uh, interaction. Doon po bumaba yung incidence of uh, adolescent pregnancy in in general, especially sa among the Uh, 15 to 19. And last strand po ng intervention na nakapaloob po doon sa comprehensive uh, action plan mm -hmm. ay yung pagpapatingkad po ng youth development and uh, youth participation in community development so that um, ano po sana natin, no, i-redirect po natin yung energy ng mga kapataan into more productive activities lalo na sa pag-contribute sa community development. At malaking papel po dapat ang ginagampanan ng SK dyan. Kasi primarily sila po yung nagpropromote po ng uh, youth uh, development. As uh, we have seen po no, as per experience, uh, yung kanilang focus while the National Youth Commission has provided po yung nine centers for participation, pero nakikita po natin na mga proyekto at programa po ng uh, mga SK ay nalilimitahan po sa mga cultural at saka sa mga sports development. Hindi naman po masama yun, ano pero ang gusto po natin sanang mangyari is mas proactive rin po sila ano, na magsagawa ng mga interventions Uh, doon po sa uh, usapin din po ng mga non-sports o mga non-cultural uh, uh, issues katulad po ng teenage pregnancy. At uh, sayang po kasi nasasayangan din po kami doon sa 10% ano, na pondo ng mga SK na sana natutugunan din po itong mga ano na to, no, pondo, uh, mga issues na to using their fund. And uh, lastly po Madam Chair, and uh, we'd like to express actually our gratitude ano, for your support and uh, through you, Um, yung 2021 and 2022 General Appropriations Act ay nakapaglagay po tayo doon ano, ng mandato sa PAPCOM at saka sa DSWD po na magsagawa ng social protection program for adolescent mothers and their children. And um, we're happy to report po to you na uh, we have reached out to 1,000 adolescent mothers ano, na nabigyan po ng um, benefits po dito. Yung nga lang, gamit lang po yung katiting ano, na pondo ng, uh, ng PAPCOM. So 13 Uh, LGUs lang po ang ating na-cover uh, as a pilot uh, implementation. But base po sa aming initial assessment, ang laking tulong po nitong programa na to, ano doon sa pagtugon, doon sa mga na-express po ni Carmela ano na kanilang mga pangangailangan. Because as we realize, na, at napatingkad din po yung aming uh, theory, ano na yung risk and vulnerabilities sa mga batang ina ay talagang real, real no? talagang matingkad po. Lalong-lalo na yung social exclusion po na kanilang nararanasan yung hindi nila pagdirektang uh, pagtanggap ng mga serbisyo from uh, the um, government because they are required of uh, for one parental consent at hindi sila direkta yung nakaka-benefit ano from uh, even mga relief goods for example it has to go through the household head no so even if they are they already are um, mother and um, more importantly po may social exclusion din po in terms of universal health care Um, yung mga buntis po na batang ina, they are covered by um, uh, kung, um, kung sila po ay buntis. Pero pagkatapos po na, na sila ay mga anak, hindi na po sila automatically covered ng, ng PhilHealth. And uh, we know yung kanilang uh, health needs. Kaya nakipag-usap rin po tayo, bahagi po ng ating coordination ay yung sa PhilHealth din na sana tignan kung paano naman magtugunan, ano yung pangangailangan. So ang ginagawa po natin, Madam Chair, ay dahil po sa konteksto ng ano ngayon no ng um, devolution na kung saan ang mga local government units ang naging 
uh, frontliner po no ng uh, pag-address at more directly nakaka sa lamuha sa mga kabataan na no, covered po ng ating uh, pinag-uusapan po ngayon um binibuild din po natin yung mga capability ng mga LGUs na magsagawa ng sarili ng programa ano using po yung additional fund uh, um, through the Mandanas Garcia ruling so ma-intense po yung ating uh, pag-advocate sa kanila at pag uh, um bibuild ng kanilang um, capacity po so yun lamang madam chair at uh, we given all of this yung po yung mga interventions that we'd like sana ano na ma-institutionalize uh, through the proposed um, bill po na naihahain po sa ano, Senate at saka sa House of Representatives. And the Commission on Population would be very glad to um, also take an active role po ano, um, sa implementing uh, mechanism po ng, um, ng, ng batas na ito. So yun lamang Madam Chair, salamat sa pagkakataon. Marami salamat sa inyo, Marami Sir Takardon at sa PAPCOM. Pati sa pag-point out ng mga intersections no, sa mga batas na ipasa na namin at yung mga panukala na isinusulong pa. Uh, kanina habang pinakikinggan namin kayo, nakikita ko rin po yung mga interaction, uh, participation ng mga resource persons online natin. Halimbawa, si Beth Angsyoko ng Democratic Socialist Women of the Philippines at si Ami Evangelisa Swanapol ng Roots of Health sa Palau. Uh, tungkol dun sa comprehensive sexuality education. Uh, sabi nila, alimbawa, na hindi marami ang maraming bata ang natututo na talaga dyan. Uh, nagsasabi yung mga teachers na kulang sila sa training para magturo ng CSE at konektado itong usapin ng teenage pregnancy sa, uh, sa women's rights. Yung nabagin nito yan kaugnay ng Uh, access din ano at yung nabanggit niyo about preventing sexual abuse and violence na kaugnay na, at, at one point you mentioned something na kaugnay din sa kapapasa naming batas raising the age of consent expanding the protection against statutory rape mula sa 12 lang years old hanggang sa hanggang sa 16. Uh, salamat po para sa lahat ng inputs nyo at sa support ang ipinapangako nyo. Um, colleagues, kailangan ko lang mag-time check sa ngayon. Uh, let's try to wrap up this first part of the hearing before 12 noon kasi meron pa tayong isa pang uh, dalawang panukala na kailangan dinigin. Um, so I will call our resource persons in order of physical appearance and then yung ating mga online resource persons. We've heard so far from DOH. Uh, from UNFPA, could I call Dr. Leila Saiji Judane? If I, I hope I'm not mispronouncing your name. Please, ma'am, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Uh, Honorable Chair uh, Senator Risa, um, Honorable Representatives and Senator Rafi, uh, <clears throat> champions of adolescent and women's rights, uh, uh, maganda o maganda. Good <laughs> morning. I would like uh, to put really in record that uh, UNFPA, uh, United Nations Population Fund, the Sexual Reproductive Health UN Agency expressed deepest uh, you know, appreciation to the Honorable Chair and uh, the members of the committee to invite UNFPA to this public uh, uh, hearing. UNFPA strongly supports the enactment of law on prevention of uh, adolescent uh, pregnancy. The Senate Bill number 372651 and uh, 1209 have a holistic approach to tackle the issue of adolescent pregnancy and suggest very comprehensive and concrete articles to be implemented. However, based on our uh, position paper that uh, we will uh, share with you, uh, uh, Madam uh, um, Chair, we will uh, we would like uh, to recommend few, uh, you know, uh, additional uh, points. Uh, as we heard uh, from honorable uh, senators uh, today, uh, although adolescent pregnancy among those uh, 15 to 19 years old has gone down, still Uh, we, um, the Philippines is one of the highest adolescent birth rate among the Asian countries. We need to recognize that. Um, and uh, still, uh, the, you know, uh, uh, adolescent uh, uh, mothers between 10 and 14 uh, years old, uh, we, can, we, show, we, uh, we, we saw that there is a slight increase, you know, between uh, 10 and 14 years old. And we need to think about m m measures that will ta uh, ta target the, this, uh, you know, age. 
So um, we have also a trend, and we heard also today uh, from uh, Senator Rafi, that uh, 59.5 percent of adolescent births were fathered by an adult man older than 20 years old. Also, while the, yeah, so and as Senator Amy, uh, Amy say, uh, reminded us, teenage pregnancy is not only a health and education problem, but also an economic development issue if we tackle it, you know, uh, at the early uh, stage. So indeed, uh, the Philippines is, uh, you know, facing the golden time. You know, one out of the three population are below age of 18 in the Philippines. With such large share of uh, young people, the country has a great window of opportunity to accelerate economic growth and sustainable development called the demographic dividend. So if uh, to capitalize on a demographic dividend, the country needs to invest in the adolescent and adolescent girls and young people, health, education, and empowerment. We heard today, Camilla, how when she's empowered to talk about her story, she can make a change in her life. And even she can support other adolescents to talk about her, their story and to know about the services, inform them. So this is how we can empower our ag adolescent girls. So, to overcome this issue, allow me, you know, share with you a few recommendations. We, we heard about the CSE, right? This is very important. To accelerate the provision of a comprehensive sexuality education for all children and adolescents without any discrimination. <clears throat> Yeah, the bills, you know, suggests a clear guidelines on how uh, the CSC should be developed uh, and implemented. Uh, and we heard today from the PED that, uh, you know, it's integrated uh, in, uh, in, in the curriculum. But still, and from the report that we received, because UNFPA, we are working, uh, you know, closely with the PED to implement the CSC. So from the last report that we received uh, from uh, uh, the Bureau of Curriculum and Development of the PED, um, it's, uh, we have only... 1.1 million learners were, uh, you know, reported to receive CSC. This 1.1 million is about 3.4 percent out of an estimated of uh, 32 million aged between 5 to 19 years old in the country. So we need to do much more. Of course, uh, we command the work that uh, has been, you know, initiated by uh, the DepEd, but we need to continue and support, you know, the implementation of the CSC in school. But of course, it's not only enough in school, and we need to extend to the young, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, adolescent girls and boys that are out of school. And we know that we have a very high percentage of uh, young adolescents that are out of school. The second point that uh, we would like uh, to also uh, emphasize on is uh, to ensure access to quality sexual and reproductive health services for all adolescents without discrimination and ensure that access to SRH services for adolescents is part of the universal health care law implementation in the country. So, and this is how, uh, you know, of course, uh, we will tackle the issue of adolescent pregnancy, but through that, we will, of course, empower young girls and adolescents, but we will also reduce the maternal mortality rate, which is one of the highest rate in the region. And by, uh, you know, reducing the maternal mortality rate among the uh, adolescent girls by, you know, uh, 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 preventing 
uh, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, adolescent pregnancy, we will make sure that we will contribute to reduce the uh, maternal mortality rate here in the Philippines. You know, it's one of the SDG indicator that the Philippines will not reach by 2030 if we don't accelerate the pace and make more efforts to reduce the maternal mortality rate. So the third point is to address harmful norms and social barriers that limits adolescents' right to realize their full potential. And we need also to promote men and boys' engagement. I'm really very happy to see, you know, Senator Rafi today, you know, advocating for uh, this uh, bill. Because we need to have men and boys' engagement it's not an issue of women. It's not an issue of adolescent girls only. It's an issue of entire society. And men and boys need to be engaged. And programs, and we, you know, have uh, many uh, uh, strategies that already showed their, uh, you know, efficiency when it, uh, it's implemented. So for that, we need to develop advocacy strategy, but uh, ensure that uh, we implement plans. We heard from Popcom, from DOH today, that uh, we developed the national plan after the uh, EO141, but still we need to make sure that it's implemented. It's implemented at all levels. You know, from uh, colleagues from Popcom, we, say, we heard that it's only 20 LGUs that are implementing this pilot. What is 20 LGUs, you know, uh, in comparison of the thousands of LGUs that needs to, you know, to do much more. And this is very important, but the LGUs, you know, uh, uh, integrate uh, the, adult, the prevention of adolescent pregnancy among their priorities and budgeted for in their, you know, uh, um, budget. So, um, for I would like also to, you know, to emphasize on the issue of the social uh, protection mechanism for adolescent and youth. Um, I'm sure we heard huh, that uh, there is a need, and it's in the uh, bills that uh, you already, you know, uh, as I said, uh, are very comprehensive. Is uh, to ensure that adolescents have access to social health insurance, feel health, without discrimination. Uh, for the time being, we know that the adolescents, they are affiliated to, you know, the field health uh, insurance of uh, their parents. How we can ensure, for example, all students, without any discrimination, they have access directly to the health insurance? Because, you know, sometimes uh, they cannot ask their parents. So if we can, you know, and I hope that also the age of consent, uh, you know, will, uh, and the consent, the parental consent will be, you know, uh, this, yeah, huh? it's very important that adolescents have access directly to the health services. So for that, they need to have access also to health insurance. And this is uh, something that uh, I hope that it will be, you know, in your bill as well. In addition uh, to that, uh, uh, it's uh, very important that uh, we uh, um, develop programs and policies dedicating to building the capability and human capital of adolescents. If we want to invest of, on adolescents, we need to build their capabilities. And it's a human capital that is, you know, uh, as I said, uh, it's a, a golden opportunity for the Philippines that needs to seize this uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, the opportunity to empower and uh, uh, educate and, uh, you know, uh, make sure that the adolescent uh, young, uh, you know, girls and boys have these capacities. The other thing that is really important, I think, is uh, to, uh, of course, prevention, but also to respond to the needs of uh, the uh, adolescent mother. And for that, uh, uh, we need to make sure that adolescent mothers can stay at school. So, you know, uh, uh, scholarships, monetary, monetary uh, support, uh, and make sure that uh, the government uh, invests uh, uh, more funds 
plans to expand and strengthen public daycare services. You know, when a mother has a, a children and she doesn't have where to put her children, she will never go back to education. So, and I can see that the system of a daycare, you know, here and the kindergarten and is not very you know, uh, developed everywhere. Perhaps, you know, in uh, cities, uh, wealthy cities, we can have, uh, we can find it, but it's not uh, uh, everywhere. So it should be affordable, accessible to all adolescent mothers without any discrimination. So, um, yeah, perhaps uh, uh, my last point, uh, which is uh, very important as well, is to ta to have a targeted approach for the most vulnerable groups. So, of course, uh, you know, uh, uh, we know that, uh, for example, the National Commission on Indigenous Population and the National Commission on Muslim Filipino will be included in the development of a national program on prevention of adolescent pregnancy, but such measures might not be be enough. And in part of uh, the national, uh, you know, prevention uh, program, uh, uh, there should be targeted action plan dedicated to the most vulnerable group uh, with higher cases of adolescent pregnancy, such as adolescent in GIDA areas. You know, uh, during uh, uh, the audit response, I visited many GIDA areas and I saw how the number of adolescent pregnancy is very high in GIDA areas. So we need to have, you know, dedicated, yeah, geographic isolated, uh, the, uh, the, uh, Disadvantaged and areas, yeah. And uh, we need also to have a very uh, uh, target, you know, uh, a program for adolescent living with uh, disabilities or the LGBTQI, uh, uh, you know, adolescent and those out, uh, are, who are out of school. We have a, pers a big percentage of adolescent out of school. And we know that the dropout of school after the COVID-19, you know, is also in a race. And we need to have a specific, you know, a program for the out of school uh, adolescent, mainly to uh, make sure that they have uh, access to CSE. Uh, you know, it's very important because now we have CSE in school, but not out of school. And we need to uh, expand for the out of school. So with that, uh, Madam Chair, uh, you, uh, uh, Honorable Representative, I would like uh, really to reiterate the support uh, of UNFPA uh, uh, to your uh, very, uh, you know, uh, important uh, um, uh, bills that uh, you are, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, debating. And uh, I want to uh, congratulate you for that. And um, let's uh, be together because it's uh, as you said madam chair it's not only the you know uh, uh, the affair of uh, health or education it's everyone you know a responsibility to make sure that we will prevent adolescent pregnancy here in the philippines thank you so much merci beaucoup <laughs> dr judan so and um, next we will call the uh, National Youth Commission representative. I just like to remind uh, our resource persons that uh, you have three minutes each to share the highlights of your position paper and may submit the complete position paper in writing uh, to the committee. So, uh, Ms. Lea Villalon, you have the floor. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair, uh, Senator uh, Rafi Tu. Po at magandang hapon po sa ating lahat, sa lahat po ng nasa Zoom din. Um, from the National Youth Commission po, um, the NYC has spearheaded the formulation of action plan for the implementation of EO 141. And uh, we have, uh, we, we had objectives that we have, uh, we want to um, share with you our accomplishments. So when it comes to the teenage preg pregnancy prevention and access to contraception, we have conducted um, island-wide youth dialogues and consultations for Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. One of the topics of the dialogue and consultation was the nationwide strategic program to address adolescent pregnancy rollout. 
We also conducted a web, uh, webinar, Pag-ibig at Pagsulong, Understanding the Appreciation of Relationship and Self-Love for the Youth Mental Health Wellness, as well as uh, we had a share ko lang webinar on health where the topics discussed was teenage pregnancy. And we also helped in uh, the publication of IEC materials and advocacy campaigns um, with other agencies and departments. Ms. Villalon, if, if I may, before you continue, just like to, the chair would like to recognize the presence of uh, Sen Robin Padilla. Shukran for attending. Magandang umaga po, Please Senator. proceed, Ms. Villalon. Uh, we also, uh, when it comes to the support for young parents, we provided technical assistance uh, as a resource per person during the teenage pregnancy and family planning symposium conducted by the SK Council in Katbalogan City. Um, uh, when it comes to uh, the sexual health promotion and reduction in risk, uh, taking behavior, yung nabanggit pa ni Sir uh, Takordon from Popcon, no? um, we conducted a Sana All No More webinar series. Uh, also, we helped in publication of IEC materials and advocacy campaigns. So, Madam Chair, we, um, in the National Youth Commission, um, we are pushing for what we call a uh, youth hub so kung saan now uh, we can partner with the local youth development office, the LYDOs. So yung itong LYDOs, sila yung um, katuwang ng mga sangguniang kabataan sa kanilang lugar. And itong youth hub ay pwedeng maging uh, a youth-friendly facility where we can train our youth to so have a peer-to-peer -peer counseling. So marami sa mga kabataan natin, kung hindi nila kayang um uh kausapin ang kanilang kapamilya ang pangalawang tao na pupuntahan nila yung mga kaibigan nila so itong peer to peer counseling na ito is to help them make the right decision so from there uh, it it would be a great help to our adolescent um to have this program so yun lang pa madam chair salamat uh, executive director villalon and uh, the chair of the committee looks forward to the support of the NYC sa finalization and implementation ng bill na ito. Thank you. Salamat po. And now from Save the Children, uh, we have, is it Vivian Grace Martin or Ms. Emma Salmani who will, who will speak? Attorney Salmani, please. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, good morning kay, uh, also to Senator Stulpo and Padilla. Uh, from Save the Children Philippines, we would like to manifest our support to the pending measures, uh, specifically uh, for the provision on making gender sensitive and disability inclusive sexual reproductive health information and services accessible to adolescents and young, young people, because these are essential in ensuring that they are informed on how to protect themselves, on how to be responsible for the expression of their sexuality. And we hope that this information and services will be made available and accessible in both development and emergency settings. Uh, Adolescents who get pregnant are at higher risk of maternal mortality and morbidity, and having access to sexual reproductive health information and services is an effective approach in reducing their, this risk. Uh, we, we also would like to um, make some recommendations uh, on how to further enhance the bill, and uh, essentially these are Number one, give due recognition to the role of adolescent girls uh, in the development of the policy in recognition of their uh, adolescent sexual reproductive health rights and in recognition also of the right to participate. Uh, improve access to adolescent and youth-friendly services, including co contraceptives without the need of parental consent in both development and humanitarian settings. Uh, ensure access of all adolescents and young people, especially those belonging to the disadvantaged and marginalized sector, to accurate information about their sexual reproductive health and rights. Such information should be accurate, age-appropriate, disability-inclusive, gender, and culturally sensitive. 
uh, strengthen the capacity of the VAUSI desk, including the personnel so that they can provide the necessary support to adolescents who are victims of sexual abuse and violence. Social protection programs should extend not only to adolescent mother and her child, but also to her family. Um, inclusion of a provision that will ensure that female students sh shall not be expelled, dismissed, suspended, refused or denied admission in any educational institution or learning center because of pregnancy outside of marriage during her school term. Our representation of adolescent groups and civil society organizations providing ASRH support services in the Adolescent Pregnancy Protection Council and representation of ad adolescent and youth organizations and civil service organi civil society organizations in the drafting and implementing rules and regulations. Uh, preventing and addressing teenage pregnancy requires a concerted effort. It is important that a holistic and integrated approach that is anchored on respect for adolescents' rights be utilized. We believe that adolescents have a right to access accurate and appropriate reproductive health information and services. Having this right will empower them to make wiser choices on how they can effectively take care of their bodies, how they can express their sexuality, including decided, deciding when they will have children. They also have a right to the same quality of reproductive health services that older women can receive from the government. Adolescents are often referred to as the future, but they are also firmly part of the present. Their right should be considered now, not tomorrow, not later. Thank you very much. Uh, we have already submitted our position paper. Thank you very much for, for submitting the paper and for reiterating yung highlights. At salamat din sa pag-affirm uh, sa isang importanting point na ni-raise din ni Carmela kanina. Um, hindi lang ito about uh, welfare, ito ay tungkol sa rights and empowerment. Kaya yung pagbibigay din ninyo ni Carmela uh, at ng maraming resource persons sa uh, evolving uh, capacities of, of the child or of the youth na may agency din sila sa lahat ng ito. So, salamat po. Now, from the Young Feminists Collective, uh, Ms. Diana Pontamilias. Okay, you have the floor. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Um, babasahin ko na lang po ang aming position, pero isasubmit namin yung issue shorten ko lang. So, I have been young and pregnant more than once. While I was no longer a teenager when it happened, can remember how difficult it was because of limited information and support. The Young Feminists Collective gives its strongest support for the passage of a law and laud legislative efforts in the Senate to address the issue of preventing adolescent pregnancies in the Philippines, including the institution of the necessary social protections. Thus, we would like to thank the committee for inviting youth representatives such as us. Like what we say when we discuss these issues, there is no us without us. There are two key considerations we need to move the law forward. The first is adolescent access to sexual and reproductive health services and commodities. The second is government obligations and responsibilities in the delivery of SRH services, commodities, and information. Unang una, adolescent access. From where I stand at the end of the day, much of this boils down to access to information, commodities, and services. Given the scale of the national social emergency and the effects of the pandemic, this access must be unhampered. Doing so supports adolescents in their exercise of their autonomy and rights. It affirms their power to make decisions over their own bodies, health, and well-being. In the case of pregnant women, this means of young pregnant women, this means a broader range of SASRH services, adolescent sexual reproductive health services covering the prenatal, postnatal, and antenatal periods of pregnancy and its associated healthcare needs. This must be made available, stigma-free, founded on the principle, principle of non-discrimination and co confidentiality of adolescents' rights and their evolving capacities. This national social emergency calls on us to contemplate extraordinary measures. But more than that, if we believe SRH services and programs must be right, rights-based and available to all, we should normalize adolescents' voluntary and independent access to these 
contraceptives and services, especially for sexually ad active adolescents, which is the most effective antidote to mostly unintended adolescent pregnancy. Any legislative effort to tackle the issue should include this if it is to be successful. We laud the legislative efforts of our houses. We want to emphasize that in the House of Representatives, they're opening new opportunities to move this forward as they are proposing a substitute bill with a more nuanced access to service. We feel that this is an important intersection of recognizing the various experiences of adolescents. Iba -iba ang experience ng mga nabubuntes from 10 to 14 to 15 to 17. Can we feel that the a substitute bill of the House of Representatives can help us move the issue forward. Ikalawa, it importante ang government responsibility. Importante na alam natin ang clear chain of command. It must designate the main agency of agencies to handle implementation, compliance, and monitoring from the national to the local level. All agencies, offices, and personnel should also work to practice the kind of care and that honors a person's full and felt sense of their sexuality and gender. It means recognizing the vulnerabilities of women, especially young women, and people of diverse sexuality and providing support services that will empower them to take charge of their own safety and well-being. In addition to this, there should be a strong process, monitoring process, along with regular review to ensure that these laws actually work. We reiterate that care must be the government's main responsibility during times of crisis. Many Filipinos readily provide support for whoever needs it. Kilala tayo sa ating pagiging matulungin, alam natin yan. Care is central to the spirit of Bayanihan. But we cannot subsist on care alone. We cannot rely on this to solve the issue without appropriate government supports. The government's role is to provide a baseline level of quality care for everybody, including gender-based violence and SRHR support services that are gender-inclusive, trauma-informed, and widely available. This must be necessarily including boosting the number of health service providers, especially at the barangay level. A referral pathway must also be created by the council to ensure that identified sexual abuse and exploitation survivors are assisted and properly handled. This way, the government's crisis response systems would empower every Filipina, not just to survive, but to allow them to define their own paths toward safety and ensure the well-being even of their loved ones. We urge that this not be seen as a difficult reform. We must consider the urgency of collective action and care amidst the post-pandemic world. While numbers of adolescent pregnancies may have declined during the pandemic, the compelling reason for action is that numbers are still significant. We have to keep trying because inaction is not an option. No teenage parent should ever feel like there is no support system she can rely on, like I did and so as many others did. Let us be the last. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Fontamilias, for sharing your story, like Carmela, and for your empowered and powerful statement. The chair also notes yung sinabi niyo about uh, that the House version has a more nuanced approach to access. And uh, habang sinusulong natin yung bills dito, when we, not if, but when we arrive at the uh, bicameral conference committee process, we will really uh, uh, look with uh, great collegiality dun sa house version na yon, uh, lalo na yung provision na iyon. Um, so th thank you very much. And the chair would like to recognize also the presence of the DILG, ASEC Puno. Thank you for joining us, sir. Please, you could... You could uh, take a, a seat with a, with a mic. Salamat po. Uh, now, let's hear from uh, yung ating mga online resource persons, beginning with the resource person from the Commission, uh, the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos. Comsec, sino po yung ating resource person from NCMF? Are you online, sir or ma'am? Online sila. Ah, okay. Exactly, you call on ASIC to Okay, while we're waiting for the NCMF resource person to come online, Asik Puno, gusto niyo po bang uh, ibigay kahit highlights ng position so far ng DILG on our bills? Ma'am, with the apologies of the department, we're still in the process of finalizing that. So if uh, by the end of the day, ma'am, the department will submit that to the committee. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's right. Uh, the chair apologizes. Sinabi na nga pala earlier sa akin ni Asik Puno, the department will be submitting the position paper within the day. Salamat po para doon, Asik. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. From NCMF, online na po ba si Commissioner Samer Aliong or Along? Is 
Yes, uh, sir. You have the floor po for the uh, perspectives of the National Commission on the bills. You have the floor po. Thank you po. Uh, Salamat alaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh po. Alaikum asalam. Uh, unang una po nagpapasalamat po kami sa pagimbita, pagbibigay ng espasyo para po sa ating mga uh, kapatid na Muslim, uh, particular, particularly the uh, youth sector. Thank you po, Madam Chair, at sa ating mga senator na nandito. Uh, salamat po kay Senator uh, Raf Fitulfo, kay Senator uh, 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 Ruben Hood Abdulaziz Padilla. Thank you po, sir, for being an inspiration to many. At kay uh, Senator Amy Marcos po. Uh, the position paper on the proposed actions for the prevention of adolescent pregnancy, Senate Bill number 372 and 1209. Uh, hindi pa po kami nakakapag-submit ng aming position letter, pero uh, isasubmit po namin uh, within this day or uh, within this week after uh, looking uh, rigorously on the in consideration of the resource persons today po. The National Commission on Muslim Filipinos, or NCMF, pursuant to its statutory mandate to preserve and develop the culture, tradition, institutions, and well-being of Muslim Filipinos, respectfully submits this position paper on Senate Bill Number 372 and Senate Bill Number 1209, otherwise known as the Prevention of Adolescent Pregnancy Act of 2022. This proposed bill eloquently elucidates the fundamental right of every Filipino youth, especially young women, to assess or access sustainable materials knowledge about sexual and reproductive health intended to avert, if not toward unintended youth pregnancies such as or such bills have profound contribution on the health and emotional needs of the Filipino youth. From the personal uh, Islamic perspective, premarital sex is haram. Uh, anything that is zina or sex outside wedlock uh, is not permissible. And thus, ideally speaking, there is no such as a phenomenon as a teenage pregnancy out of wedlock. Beyond culture, it is a way of life for Muslim. Islam is very much against meaningless frolicking leading to unwanted pregnancies. It rejects any kind of fun, infatuation, or sex that is not limited to the legal boundaries of marriage. In fact, everything that leads to sexual aberration, regardless of whether it is from the heart, the eyes, the tongue, the hands, or other organs, and everything that leads to the sexual act, regardless of whether it is petting or practice, is reputated by Islam or repudiated by Islam for it leads to moral problems, wherein a person distances himself from the proper path prescribed by God. Instead, what Islam encourages is marriage and commitment in relationships. It likewise promotes the value of family. That is why Islam believes that early marriage is very positive. And so once people come of age, they should be encouraged to get married settle down and have children. This proposed bill eloquently elucidates the fundamental right of every Filipino youth, especially young women, to, to access sustainable material knowledge about sexual and reproductive health intended to avert, if not toward unintended youth pregnancies. Such bills have profound contribution in the health and emotional needs of uh, emotional needs of the Filipino youth. I will skip some of the of the statement po or of the position so that I can go through with the exact uh, uh, proposals of the commission. Okay. 
Indisputably, the Commission strongly opines that the state has a compelling interest in extending social protection to minors against all forms of neglect, exploitation, and immorality which may pollute innocent minds by way of helping and encouraging all parents through regulatory mechanisms, through different programs catered for the protection of young children from exposure to undesirable materials which report or which results to corrupting their minds and experiences. This primordial policy consideration that must be given attention to if the state wants to make a change in the lives of the Filipino youth. The state must generate a conclusive program through the Senate bill so that it can best intervene and offer sustainable amenities to the Filipino youth. This is a sole reason why the welfare of the Filipino youth deserves paramount protection through regulations promulgated by the duly constituted authority against an intended pregnancy so that their academic attributes and other talents possessing acumen in all fields of endeavor can well contribute to the progress and development of the country. And then there too, after a deliberation with the members of this commission, we fervently recommend the following propositions to be considered in the finalization of the bill. Number one, to emphasize the need for the passage of the bill, which primar or primarily addresses the concern of an intended youth pregnancy. Number two, to subscribe for a systematic reform for a comprehensive social and healthcare services for the Filipino youth concerning an intended youth pregnancy. Number three, to strengthen the advocacy for averting, if not eradicating, an intended youth pregnancy through education and information dissemination, taking into consideration the cultural sensitivity and traditions of Muslim communities, which by the way is being practiced by the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos in implementing or in educating our Filipino constituents or our uh, Filipino Muslim constituents through the 11 uh, regional offices and area, uh, area and provincial offices we have all over the country by way of conducting paralegal uh, uh, summits and events in every provinces, wherein our most vulnerable sectors, such as women and children, are being uh, taken into consideration and as part of the audience of our programs. Number four, there must be a clear idea of proper implementation of the legislative policy without curtailing the rights and the traditions of Muslims if the same would pass the rigorous congressional scrutiny or the Senate scrutiny. The Commission prays for the enactment of a bill that will greatly nurture the development and moral consciousness of the Filipino youth for the benefit of the whole Filipino nation. Uh, we strongly clamor for a steadfast support, the successful passage of the bill that will provide proper safeguards for the young ones to stop, if not minimize, an intended teenage pregnancy with the hope that it will pave the way for a fairer, more aware, and more equal economic and social opportunities to the Filipino youth, especially young women. Uh, again, Paul, we will submit the uh, position letter uh, after this uh, session. Pa. Shukran po. Uh, again, makaming salamat. Shukran, Commissioner Alyong. Uh, the chair hears, um, I think, a broad area of unity on the principles of the bills, uh, even in the mind of the commission, and looks forward to NCMF's continued participation as we finalize the bills into law, uh, even through the technical working group, especially on the details of how the law can be fully and properly implemented also among young Muslim Filipinos. Uh, could I ask for, uh, I think uh, CWCU Secta Palace would like to make a brief response, brief, because we have about uh, 
five uh, remaining resource persons. Thank yes, you, sir, you Madam to... Chair. Uh, I will make this very brief here, Your Honor, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, we commit to submit a detailed uh, position paper on the proposed bills. Uh, first of all, uh, the Council for the Welfare of Children strongly supports a, a Senate Bill 372 of Honorable Ontiveros, Senate Bill 1209 of Honorable Rebilia, and Senate Bill 651 of Honorable Marcos. Uh, like other research uh, uh, resource persons here, the Council for the Welfare of Children recognizes adolescent pregnancy as a national social emergency. As aptly mentioned by Honorable Senator Amy Marcos earlier, it's not just a health and gender problem, but it's also an economic problem. But we would like to ask, uh, add more, uh, taking off from what uh, Senator Rafi Tulpo stated earlier, it also has a protection complexion, a child protection complexion. That's why the Council for the Welfare of Children lauds the provision of the proposed legislation on sexual protection in case of sexual violence. We, we submit your honor, uh, Madam Chair, and we agree with Senator Tulfo earlier, that adolescent pregnancy is also a function, not just of poverty, underdevelopment, the economy, but also of violence against children. Uh, it's also a protection issue. That's why child protection should be a paramount consideration in the drafting and implementation, of course, the passing and the implementation of these bills. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, in, in, in that, I don't know, uh, taking off from that uh, statement, uh, the, the bodies, uh, particularly the Council, uh, Madam Chair, uh, we suggest, first of all, Madam Chair, the Council for the Welfare of Children is the focal agency of the government about children. We are an attached agency of the DSWD. So anything about children, it lies within our mandate and jurisdiction. That's why in the Declaration of Policy in Section 2, po, uh, Paragraph A, we would like to, of course, respectfully suggest the inclusion of the word children, not just adolescent and young people, but adolescent and children. Because uh, children is any person below 18. So we overlap with our cousin agency, the National Youth Commission. So we are like cousin agencies and we handle the promotion and protection of children's rights. So that's uh, the first uh, proposed um, uh, revision uh, with respect, of course, uh, from the Council for the Welfare of Children. Secondly, uh, Madam Chair, there is a mention in Section 5 about regional and local information and service delivery networks for adolescent and health development. Uh, uh, there are I think, uh, Madam Chair, no, insofar as the CWC is concerned, there is a need to study how this particular body will interact with existing service delivery networks because there are, uh, uh, and I think the DOH can also comment on this because pursuant to the Republic uh, Responsible Parenthood and Reproduct Reproductive Health Act of 2012 and pursuant to Admin Order 2014-0046, and Department Memorandum 2014-0313 of the DOH, there are service delivery networks on adolescent health and development program. Just to avoid confusion, duplication, or maybe if there's a need to streamline, uh, there is a need to study how uh, the proposed council, which of course we support, uh, will interact, will coexist, and will work or collaborate with, with these existing structures. Considering our first, um, our initial statement that this is also a child protection issue. We would also like to uh, suggest, Madam Chair, that uh, the council or even the other bodies uh, mandated to be uh, created under this law to work uh, with existing councils like the local protection, uh, local uh, councils for the protection of children in the LGUs and the barangay councils for the protection of children so as to, to ensure that the laudable purposes and objectives of these uh, proposed uh, Senate bills will be cascaded to the structures relating to child protection already existing. Um, and uh, as earlier mentioned, Madam Chair, in the Adolescent Pregnancy Prevention Council, uh, while the CWC has duties and responsibilities in this section, in Section 22, I think it, 
there was uh, perhaps this is just a typo or a clerical. We were omitted in the members of the council, but we were indicated there as one of those having responsibility. So uh, we also would like to join this council, uh, Madam Chair, because as stated earlier, we are the focal agency about children, and we are very much willing to help, of course, you know, to promote uh, the protection of children and even their participation as was what the other resource persons uh, stated. Again, for the Council for the Welfare of Children, we support these pending Senate bills, and it is high time that after E0141 of President Duterte, uh, there is now uh, pending legislations before the Senate and the House, which would definitely address this national social emergency, Madam Chair. Uh, again, we, we, uh, we thank this uh, Honorable Committee for inviting us and we undertake to submit a more detailed uh, position paper on the pending Senate bills. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much also, Yusek Tapales. Points very well taken uh, in terms of the definition of terms in the bills, uh, the um, uh, setting up really a, a policy framework where the laws and the new laws are uh, consistent with each other, not working at cross purposes, but also optimizing, uh, as you said, uh, working together. Uh, and uh, point well taken also about the, the composition of the council. Salamat po. Uh, next, we will call uh, only because, and I, I apologize, only because we're trying to close this first deliberation on the teenage pregnancy prevention bills by around 12.15, which is four minutes from now, so we can go into the gender pandemic protocols bills. Apologies because the, and, and also apologies to my uh, colleague, uh, Sen Robin, because the chair has to catch up with a, a 1 p.m. meeting. So, uh, uh, with apologies to, to the other uh, resource persons, if the chair may, we will uh, call next. We will prioritize for the last three minutes the NCIP, the UP Population Institute, and the Roots of Health. And if, if, uh, if there's no violent objection, the chair will request our resource persons from MTRCB, TESDA, ALFI, and DSWP to share their position in the technical working group. So while I'm not hearing violent objections, the chair will recognize next the resource person from the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples, Attorney Jufrel Virtudes, ah, who is online. Attorney? If Attorney Virtudes is uh, not yet ready, the chair calls now. The UP Population Institute, um, Ms. Elma Laguna. Hi. Yes, hello. Yes, ma'am, you have the floor. Yes, okay. Uh, so thank you very much. I, we thank the committee for this opportunity to comment on the proposed prevention, adolescent pregnant, prevention of Adolescent Pregnancy Act of 2022. So I will just uh, re read the highlight of uh, our comment, and we also sent a copy of such to the secretariat. Thank you. We need to revise because there's one graph that is wrong. So, okay. So, uh, the UPPI shares in the multi sectoral efforts to address this issue, and we are happy that the data that uh, uh, the data being generated by our research, as well as the analysis based on other data sources that we are doing in the institute, are being used as inputs for policies and programs that will promote the well being and development of Filipino young people. So what do the data say about teenage pregnancy? So this has been mentioned before, based on the series of YAP survey, we observe an increase in the prevalence of teenage motherhood between 20, 2002 and 2013 from 6.3 to 13.7. However, in the recent 2021 YAPs, the percentage of young women 15 to 19 who have begun childbearing dropped to 7%. The National Demographic and Health Survey also corroborated this result. There was already a declining trend in the percentage of 15 to 19 who began childbearing since 2013. And in the 2013 in DHS, it's 10%. Uh, drop, it dropped to 8.6 in 2017 and in 20, 2000, uh, 2022 to 5.4. Similarly, the teen birth rate or the number of live births per 1,000 teen girls aged 15 to 19 based on the 
20, 22 in DHS also decreased to 25 from 47 in 2017. What about births among women under the age of 15? Much has been said about the increasing number of young girls, 10 to 14, who become pregnant. Our analysis of the civil registration and vital statistics data from 2010 to 2019 points to an increasing number of births from young women under age 15 from 1,324 reported in 2010 to 2,411 in 2019. In terms of percentage, this is equivalent to 0.07% and 0.14% of live births in 2019, 2010 and 2019 respectively. The increasing number of births from this young cohort can be partly attributed to the increasing population base of women in this age cohort. We agree, however, that regardless of whether the number increases or the percentage remains stable over time, the fact that this is happening to our young girls is a cause of concern. There should be no pregnancy among girls aged 10 to 14. But in our efforts to bring to light this important issue, let us use data responsibly. If we look at the trends from both national surveys and civil registration statistics, they all point to a declining percentage of teen pregnancy, either from the age group 15 to 19 or from 10 to 17. This is important to point out because teenage pregnancy is not a new issue, phenomenon. The current trend also implies that some programs in place might be working. We need to know what programs work and how they can further be improved. For example, the Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health Law the K-12 program, which extends schooling for young girls and in the process provides them with better opportunities for education and employment. Aside from the decrease in the prevalence of early childbearing, results of the 2021 YAPS also show a lower percentage of young people who engage in early sexual activity and sex outside marriage from 32% in 2013 to 22% in 2021. Compared to previous YAPS round in 2021, the majority of those with premarital sex experience reported using any form of protection during their first sexual experience. That's 68% for males and 57% for females. We also see a preference for smaller family sizes as indicated by the ideal number of children among our youth. Among males, the average number of children they prefer is 2.6. And for females, it's 2.2. This was down from 3.1 and 2.6 10 years ago. But when, between 2013 and 2021, we also saw a slight decrease in the percentage of unwanted, mistimed, and even intended uh, first pregnancies. Among first-time mothers, 16.8% said their pregnancy was unwanted. In 2013, this was 18%. Similarly, 18.5% said that the pregnancy was mistimed, down from 22.4% in 2013. 2% 2 of our young women and 1.4% of men aged 18 to 24 experienced coercive sex by age 18. These were mostly perpetuated by their boyfriend, girlfriend, and their friends. Four in 10 young Filipinos said they did not have material sources of information about sex. And, um, uh, and among those with material sources, the majority rely on social media. Compared to previous rounds, more young people now said that they have no one to consult when they want, they have questions about sex. That's 33% among our young males and 23% among young females. So it is also not common to discuss sex at home. Only 12 or 13, and 13% of young uh, people said they discuss sex at home. Awareness and knowledge of HIV AIDS were also lower compared to previous YAF surveys. So the fact that we conducted the survey during the pandemic may have implications on the results that we have seen. There was limited mobility because of the lockdown, thus few opportunities for social activities among young people. Whether the trend observed from the data will continue or will go back to pre-pandemic level remains to be seen, but there are important findings that the proposed bills can address. One, we support the provision and the need for age and development appropriate comprehensive sexuality education, both for in-school and out-of-school youth and parents of adolescents. They should also include the development of materials and their dissemination through platforms that are more accessible to young people. Regarding social protection for adolescent mothers and fathers, while this is a good provision, it should also recognize the important role of the family. 
the Commission of Population and Development estimated that over 133,000 families will be headed by minors by the end of 2021. However, adolescent parents do not form their own separate households. They remain with their parents and are fully supported with, uh, by them as they raise their first child. There should be a provision that gives incentives to parents supporting their children who are teenage parents. Finally, on the creation of a national information system on the prevention of adolescent pregnancy, that's Section 21, we support the institutionalization of the YAPS as a regular national survey to be funded by the government. However, we do not support extending the coverage to earlier ages, as proposed 10 to 14, of existing surveys such as the YAPS, the National Demographic and Health Survey, the Family Health Survey, and Maternal and Child Health Survey. Childbearing at ages 10 to 14 is still a rare event, and to include this in the said surveys will only complicate logistical arrangement because of research ethics and data privacy concerns when doing research with children. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Laguna. Points well taken, uh, and some are quite intriguing and bear further study by the committee. Uh, I think I see NCIP attorney Virtudes already in video, news, sir. And I'd like to encourage our last few um, resource persons for this round of bills to go, if you if you don't mind, to go straight to your positions on the bills and your recommended amendments, if any. Attorney Virtudes, you have the floor. Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, Senator Riza. Good morning, Senator Oh, I'm Riza. sorry, Attorney, to interrupt. Uh, dear friends, please, kumain na po tayo. I don't hear anybody eating. Please, uh, let's have lunch. Salamat. Yes, Attorney, please proceed. Yes, good morning, Senator uh, Riza, Senator Aimi, Senator Rafi, and Senator Robin. It is the mandate of the agency to protect the rights of ICCs and IPs, to preserve and develop their cultures, traditions, and institutions. We are further mandated to consider these rights in the formulation of national laws and policies. In this regard, we manifest our unequivocal support to the bills in preventing teenage pregnancy in the country. Among IP communities, adolescent pregnancy is multifactorial, brought about by economics and lack of knowledge regarding health risks in teen pregnancy. We believe that the bills will not only help prevent but also care for our adolescent pregnant IPs. The implementation of the bills will be challenging the number of one fact, the number one factor that we should take into consideration that the comprehensive sexuality education or CSE should be started at home, considering one of the cultures of the ICC and IPC child marriage. We view that the bills are in line with the executive order 141, which was signed two years ago, as mentioned by Senator Aimee, adopting as a national priority the implementation of measures to address the root causes of the rising number of teenage pregnancies and mobilizing government agencies thereof. Accordingly, we may, may we have the indulgence of the Honorable Chair, Your Honor, the position of the Commission will be submitted as soon as the Chairperson signs the same relative to the proposed Senate measures. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you also, Attorney Virtudes. Uh, abangan po namin yung position paper ng Commission. Thank, Thank you, you, Paul. And uh, last but not the least for this morning, uh, this day, we'll be hearing from, oh, and before I call a resource person from Roots of Health, could I also make it of record that, uh, or, or, or express to PLCPD, we will also certainly be hearing your position in the technical working group. Uh, the chair apologizes to E.D. Uh, Donghieto, uh, hindi, ko pa, hindi ko pa kayo natawag to give your position earlier. Uh, tumugon nga lang pala kayo sa tanong uh, ni Sen Aimee. But if you, if you don't mind, if you don't have a violent objection, to salamat po. We will certainly hear you in the TWG. Salamat po. So now I'd like to call um, Amina Evangelista Suanopol from Roots of Health. Yes, Ami, you have the floor. <laughs> Good afternoon po, magandang tanghali po sa lahat, and thank you very much to the Honorable Senator Hontiveros, Senator Padilla, Senator Tulfo, and Senator Marcos for this opportunity to provide feedback on the proposed teen pregnancy bills. As we know, some of the most influential drivers that affect teen pregnancy in the Philippines are a lack of information, a lack of access to non-judgmental and youth-friendly contraceptive services, and a lack of an enabling environment. So to address those issues, for the last 14 years, my organization, Roots of Health, or Ugat ng Kalusugan, has been providing these kinds of programs and services to help empower Filipinos and strengthen government health systems in Palawan. 
So included in this is the provision of CSEs in schools and communities, as well as training teachers in providing CSE, providing women and young people with non-judgmental and high quality free reproductive health services, and working to strengthen systems, particularly through training and empowering SKs, health workers, LGU officials, and planning officers working on data management systems. So we'd really like to commend the Honorable Senators on the scope and the reach of the proposed legislation, especially on the service delivery network, engaging SKs, supporting CSEs in schools, and on a national information system. So I just have four recommendations, and these include for the service delivery, working with barangay health workers and staff, we've found that the biggest issue is provider bias. Roughly half of the healthcare workers we work with do not approve of young people having sex. So when youth try to access services, they're scolded or shamed or denied services or all of the above. Therefore, we urge the protection of adolescents' rights to access services with specific legislation that will supersede previous age restrictions to accessing these. All three bills currently call for adolescents who need access to services to get these. However, the reality is that the age restrictions in the RH law allow health providers to refuse young people the services they seek. New legislation must be passed that enshrines young people's ability to access services. At a minimum, the parental consent clause in the RH law should be lowered to youth under 15 years old, as was done with the expanded HIV law. The second recommendation is on working with SKs. We've trained 1,500 SKs through the years and can attest to their enthusiasm in helping their peers to access credible and high-quality SRH information and services. This is definitely a program that can be scaled up. But SKs should be provided training of trainer support so that they can help roll out CSE, service delivery referrals, and peer counseling. And an opportunity here as well is to utilize the Department of Health's CADA network resources. Uh, the third is on comprehensive sex ed in schools. An important step in the rollout of CSE in schools is the training of CSE coordinators who can train and support other teachers. And DepEd must allocate funds to ensure the capacity building training of teachers. Uh, teachers in Palawan have told us they are not yet equipped to teach this. They have not had the training to actually learn how to really tackle this, this subject, which for a lot of them, they've never done before. So this is crucial. DepEd can also capitalize on the I Choose campaign led by Popcom and the DOH and include localized youth-friendly materials in teaching modules. The I Choose website is malayaako.ph in case any of you would like to see it. And finally, on the national information system, we recommend the creation of a dashboard to analyze and display data collected from the YAFs, NDHS, and by LGUs, which is more timely and granular. We also call on DOH and Popcom to include a data indicator on teen contraceptive use throughout the country so that we can start keeping track of how many of our Filipino youth are using contraception and be able to monitor any increases or decreases to this. So thank you very much again for this opportunity and we remain at your service in case you would like any more information and we'll also be uh, submitting a position paper that has more details on all of this. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat din, Ami, for the forthcoming position paper and for the recommendations so far that I think positively also mention uh, other resource organizations and persons around the table for potential partnerships moving forward. Salamat. At this point, I'd like to give the floor to Sen Robin uh, for his statement regarding our teenage pregnancy prevention bill. Sen Robin, you have the floor. Uh, uh, maraming salamat po sa ating uh, mahal na tagapangulo ang tunay na nagtatanggol sa kababaihan, karapatan ng mga uh, ating mga tinatawag nating mahal sa buhay. Ma'am uh, Senator, mabuhay po. Um, isang magandang umaga po. Uh, ako po'y makikinig lamang sa inyong pagdinig sapagkat marami po akong natututunan. Gusto ko lamang pong magpaalala lang. Paalala lang po yung sa akin na alam niyo po, Napakagaganda po ng mga nadinig kong mungkahi. English, Tagalog, uh, galing sa mga katutubo. Tunay na kayamanan po itong lahat ng narinig ko. Ngunit bilang tagapangulo po ng uh, Komite ng Public Information, meron po tayong kalaban kasi eh. 
lahat po ng impormasyon na gusto nating dalin sa ating kabataan, ito po ay kinukontra lamang ng social media. Wala po tayong sapat na kapangyarihan para labanan ang mga impormasyon na lumalabas sa social media. Alam niyo po ba, ang Pilipinas ay most social nation. Katunayan, uh, 78% po ng mga tao dito may, may telepono, may cellphone. At 59% ang may internet access. 53% ay mga merong social networking account. Ang mga tao po dito sa Pilipinas, lalo na ang kabataan, ang average po ng paggamit nila ng social media ay nasa anim na oras, mas higit pa sa paaralan na ginugugol nila. Ang tinutumbok ko po, hanggat tayo po, maganda, ta magaganda po lahat ang gusto nating programa. Napakagaganda po ng mga panukalang batas dito sa Senado. Ngunit, hanggat hindi po natin tinatalakay ang paano natin kukontrolin ng social media, alam niyo po ang mga bata, nakakapanood na ng mga porno diyan sa nakakalungkot po dahil gusto po natin ma-educate sila, gusto natin malaman nila ng tama ang problema. Minsan meron pa tayo pong mga vloggers na hindi din natin makontrol, nagkukwento pa ng kanilang mga sexual exploits sa Facebook. Sana po, uh, mabigyan natin ng tamang deskripsyon dito una sa Senado at sa lower house kung ano ba yung kalayaan na yan sa social media. Hanggat hindi po natin nakukontrol ang kalayaan na yan sa social media, sayang po lahat ang gusto nating ilaan na panahon, pera, nadidinig ko, pondo, ang inihingi, pondo, meron pang isang resource speaker ang inihingi, ayuda sa mga mabubuntis pa, eh, papano po yan? Kung ang kalaban natin, mag-uukol tayo ng isang oras, dalawang oras para sa lecture, pero may anim na oras na kalukuhan naman sa social media. Meron pa tayo mga dating sites para mga teen, sa mga teenager. Oh my goodness gracious. Yun lamang po, mahal na uh, uh, tagapangulo. Sana po maharap po natin ang sularinin na ito. Maraming salamat po. Shukran, uh, Sen. Robin. And uh, the committee takes note uh, of, of the concern expressed by Sen. Robin, lalo na para sa kagalingan ng ating mga young people at mga, mga bata. Salamat po. Uh, so, at this point, uh, paalala na lang po sa ating mga uh, ibang resource persons and organizations, kasama po ang MTRCB, TESDA, ALFI, DSWP at PLCPD. Uh, to please, kung hindi pa po, isumite yung position paper sa ating komite and then aasahan din po kayo uh, at lahat uh, sa ating technical working group. So, So, marami salamat sa lahat ng resource persons for the teenage pregnancy prevention bills. Uh, yung mga, those who will be staying on for the discussion on the gender responsive pandemic protocols and uh, additional resource persons, uh, please continue enjoying your lunch. And if you don't mind, we will continue with our, our working lunch. Pero maraming maraming salamat po sa mga resource persons thus far and looking forward to see you in the TWG. Mabuhay po. Salamat. Shukran, Sen. Robin. Magpapatuloy na po tayo sa patuloy na ano, pagdinig. Uh, we now move on to the next set of bills up for discussion today. Uh, Senate Bills number 375 of this representation and 1339 of Sen. Legarda, 
which are on establishing gender responsive and inclusive protocols to address the gender differentiated needs of women during pandemics, emergencies, and disasters. We also note that Senate Bill 1838, filed by Senator Angara, is awaiting referral. So the chair will uh, dispense with um, delivering an opening statement. Sen Robin, gusto niyo po bang, sorry to interrupt, gusto niyo po bang mag-opening statement? Hindi na po? No, sige po, salamat. Shukran, Sen Robin. Uh, ating Comsec, Comsec, nakapag-lunch na ba kayo? You're okay pa po. May I again call on our Comsec to read the names of our resource persons for this set of bills, please. Marami salamat muli. Merci boku. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Okay. Uh, for uh, from the Department of Health. We have uh, Dr. Jose Gerald Bellimac. Then uh, we have Dr. Bernadette Velasco. Then for uh, the United Nations Population Fund, we have still Dr. Leila Sanji Jundane. Then from the UN. Yeah, okay, for the UN Women Philippines, we have Ms. Cherise Jordan. Then from the Young Feminist Collective, we have Ms. Diana Katrina Ortamilias. Then uh, still online, we have Ms. Elizabeth Angshoko. Then we have from the Philippine Legislature Committee on Population Development, we have Mr. Romeo Dongeto. Then from the Advocacy, and uh, we have... Uh, Online, Ms. Luisa Carla Galicia from the Philippine Legislators Committee on Population and Development. Then from uh, the Department of Education, we have uh, Director Nanette Esplana Alama. Then from, we have online uh, National Commission on Muslim Mindanao. We have uh, Muslim Filipinos, sorry. We have Commissioner Samir Along. Then from the Commission on Population, we have Deputy Executive Director, Mr. Lolito Takardon. Then we have the Council for Welfare of Children. We have Yusek Angelo M. Tapales. Okay, I'm sorry. For the... This is for the resource person for the gender responsive. Uh, from the Philippine Commission on Women, we have Attorney Christine Rosalie Yuzon Chavez. We have a Development uh, Management Officer from the Commission on Human Rights. We have Ms. Patricia Isabella SC. Then from the uh, One International Philippines, we have uh, Ms. Twyla Ann David. Then we have Ms. Pauline Gutierrez. Then from the Oxfam Filipinas, we have Ms. Erica Hieronimo. Then from the Women Legal and Human Rights Bureau, we have uh, the Executive Director, Ms. Jelen Paklarin. Then from the uh, Center for Migrants Advocacy, we have Ms. Ellen Sana. Uh, we have uh, still for the Center for Migrants Advocacy, we have Ms. Paul John Flores. Ms. Nancy Gaspar and Ms. Sarah Lopez. From the Akvayanihan, we have Ms. Kathleen Kiese Sumay, Sumaylo Pearlman. That's all, Madam Chair. Right. Yes, uh, from, uh, we have with us uh, Ms. Uh, Max Mary Rose Ramos from the Galang Philippines. Thank you. Thank you, Comsec. So let's hear from uh, our resource persons on the gender responsive pandemic protocols bills. Uh, let's begin with the, is she online? The resource person from PCW, Attorney Chavez. A 
Attorney Chavez, are you uh, online and ready? Okay, while we're waiting for Attorney Chavez, let's hear first then from uh, Let's hear from the Commission on Human Rights, Ms. Patricia Isabella C. Yes, ma'am. Um, I see you. Afternoon. Afternoon. You have the floor. Yes. Um, the Commission on Human Rights supports the passage and enactment of a law that will ensure gender responsive and inclusive protocols and programs during public health concerns, emergencies, and disasters. Miss, would, would you mind removing your mask if it's safe, if you're safe in in your room there at the office, para we can hear you clearly. Salamat po. Uh, is it clear enough, po, ma'am? Better po, salamat. Uh, this would be in line in line with the rights enshrined in CEDO and the guidance note on CEDO and COVID nineteen, which called for states parties to ensure that the measures taken to address the COVID nineteen pandemic do not directly or indirectly discriminate against women and girls, that there is accountability for GBVs, and that participation in policy and decision-making in all crisis responses and recovery efforts is guaranteed. Um, in addition to this, Paul, we would also like to reiterate our position on the similar bills filed in the previous Congress. Uh, uh, first, for the title, uh, we recommend adopting the title proposed by SB 375, which addresses gender differentiated needs of women during pandemics in general and not just the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we would also like uh, for Section 3D to insert the word accessible uh, just to emphasize ensuring accessible communication systems as part of the purpose of this app. Um, both women with disability and those in geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas need accessible communication systems that address their vulnerabilities and specific contexts. Access to sign language interpreters for the deaf and accessible large format print for those with low vision have been previously raised pre-pandemic. On strengthening GVB preparedness, um, that section 9 of SD 1339 and section 12 of 375, to ensure shelters for victims of domestic abuse are compliant with uh, COVID-19 safety protocols and establish or strengthen accountability mechanisms. On the sexual reproductive health rights and essential services package, um, that section 10 of 1339 and section 13 of 375, to ensure that discrete home delivery for other means of access to hormones for those undergoing hormone therapy. Um, we also recommend strengthening of provisions and inclusion of additional group of women facing multiple intersecting vulnerabilities, specifically the following. Uh, first is women deprived of liberty and children in conflict with the law, uh, specifically ensuring access to health services and observance of minimum health standards in detention facilities. Uh, for more Muslim women, ensuring the provision of services and support that are sensitive to, to the traditions and beliefs of more Muslim women. And in addition to provision of halal relief goods, the duty bearers response to deaths of such women, such as the handling and internment of the remains, should observe religious and cultural sensitivity, sensitivities as far as practicable during, during the time of the pandemic. For migrant women, it is recommended to also provide intervention and support to overseas Filipino workers who missed their opportunity, their deployment due to the due to uh, quarantine. And for people living with HIV or AIDS, uh, it is recommended for LGUs to be mandated to ensure the continued access to antiretroviral drugs and treatment hubs in a manner that will not compromise the safety of PLHIVs. Um, with the permission of uh, Madam Chairman, we would like to submit our position paper uh, as soon as it is signed by the Commission. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. C. Please do submit. And salamat dun sa mga panimulang rekomendasyon na ibinigay nyo sa amin. Thank you. Uh, next, we will hear from UN Women, Ms. Cherise Hordan. You have the floor. Yes, magandang umaga po. Um, 
Thank you, Chair, Senator Risa, and Senator Robin Padilla. And um, mula po sa UN Women, ako po saan ay magpa-Filipino. Lahat po tayo dito ay um, Filipino-speaking naman po. Um, although mula sa UN, no, talagang um, madalas Ingles ang salita. Pero gusto ko po saan um, magsalita sa Pilipino. Gusto ko po simulan, um, mahaba po itong bill na ito. Uh, sa totoo lang, Gender Responsive Inclusive Pandemic Management Act. Ang dalawa po yung tinitignan natin, pande pandemia. At um, kami po sa UN Women, mula na rin sa mga uh, komunidad at mga pag-aaral. Kasi si UN po, nakikipagtulungan po tayo. Hindi lang po tayo isang ahensya na international, kundi talagang kasama natin ng mga communities. At uh, lalo na po yung mga tinatawag nating marginalized or naisasang tabi. Habang kasama po natin sila sa mga konsultasyon, kantuhan, ay gumagawa po tayo ng pag-aaral. So gumawa po ng pag-aaral ang UN Women, kaba kabahagi po dito ang ating mga communities. At lumalabas po kahit po ngayon na 2023, ramdam nila ang pandemya, ramdam pa rin ang epekto po ng pandemya. So dalawa po yung sinusulong natin sa pandemic bill na ito. Una, hindi po natatapos ang pandemya. Maari magkaroon pa po ng mas malakat pa. Ah, no? At saan hindi, pero baka po magkaroon pa ng pandemic. Pangalawa po, bakit po merong pagbanggit ng gender at ang lumalabas po mula sa pag-aaral? Meron po tayong tinatawag na LNOB, Leave No One Behind. Nakakalungkot po, um, Madam Chair, Senator Robin, ang dami pong naiwanan po uh, habang po may pandemya. Lalo pong may mga uh, tinatawag po natin na isolate, natatrap po sa mga abusive conditions. At kabilang na nga po dito yung binanggit natin yung, uh, sa mga naabuso ng mga kababaihan, mga bata. In fact po, mula sa Philippine National Police, Pandemic po ito, 2020 nag-lockdown, Senator Robin. Walo po ang nakapag-report ng panggagahasa. In fact, I personally received, kahit UN po ako, no, at hindi kami direct services, meron po nakakalungkot, hindi siya makapag-report, may curfew, hindi na lang umuwi kasi po baka hulihin po ng police. So kasama po niya yung mga kaibigan po niya, minor po ito, 16 years old, siya po ay narip ang isa rin pong minor and nakakalungkot na hindi po ito nag-iisa na kaso. At marami din po yung mga kababaihan dahil magkakasama na sa bahay at uh, lalo din silang uh, nakakaranas ng pang-abuso mula sa kanilang mga katuwang. At uh, meron nga po din kwento at direct tayo ito mula sa mga communities po na consultation na binahagi rin po sa atin. Natulog na lang po siya sa lab, lo, labas ng bahay po nila kasi hindi po sila makakalabas po ng barangay. At nandun po Abus, inabuso po siya ng asawa na hindi, ayaw na po niyang bumalik doon sa loob ng bahay nila. Ito po ang mga uh, example po ng mga tunay na mga nangyari. At gusto ko lang po banggitin na ilang libo po umuwi ng mga OFWs natin. Ito po, hindi nila alam anong gagawin sa kanila. Alam po natin ito, yung mga nasa ano na lang, no? nasa mga uh, overpass, natutulog doon at marami din po doon, kababaihan, may mga nabastos din po. At hindi lang po, sana po wag natin kalimutan, paano naman po yung mga kababaihan, mga OFWs natin sa ibang bansa. Again po, may mga pag-aaral si UN Women dito. At mula ito sa mga tunay na pagpapatotoo, yung pag-aaral natin, hindi lang policy mapping na ginawa ng mga abogado natin. Talagang meron din talagang consultation, kwento, case studies po mula sa mga kababaihan. Meron po tayong, sorry po, trigger warning po ang tawag natin. Baka may mapukaw ng mga traumatic incident. Um, habang po nandoon sa ibang bansa ay ginahasa po siya ng employer niya. Hindi po siya makalabas kasi nga po ay lockdown din po doon. At dahil busy nga po sa repatriation ay hindi rin siya nakauwi. Um, at Ilang beses po nangyari yun. Um, thank you, Senator Teresa, kasi nagkaroon kami ng um, parang uh, meet and greet, no? ang tawag po namin, babaeng biyahiro, ang tawag natin sa ating mga survivors po ng violence. Hindi ko na po pa malalawigin pa dahil marami pa po akong kasamahan. Gusto ko lang po sa nang sabihin na sana po talagang mapag-unlakan itong aming hiling na maipasa na March 8 na po, Women's Month, International Women's Month. Kasabay ng ating pagdiwag, sana po may ibahagi ito, may ibigay ito bilang regalo sa ating mga kababaihan. Ito pong Gender Responsive and Inclusive Pandemic Management Act. Sa mandaling salita po, may pandemya pa, hindi pa nang natatapos ang pandemya. Maari pa po magkaroon pa ng pandemya. Huwag po natin sanang iwanan ang mga kababaihan, lalo na po yung mga naaabuso. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair.
Maraming salamat din, Ms. Chang, at magandang pangitain yun kung maipasa namin ito uh, dito sa Senado uh, by March 8 or ng Kongreso by March 8. Salamat. Uh, ngayon, mula sa Center for Migrant Advocacy, si Ellen Sana. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. You have the floor. Uh -oh. Uh, salamat, Chair. Uh, kami po ay nagsubmit ng aming position paper <laughs> kanina ni ng umaga. <laughs> but uh, tulad po. po ni Ms. Jordan, uh, the Center for Migrant Advocacy fully supports the proposed measure measures authored by Sen. Risa, SB 375 and SB 1339 authored by Sen. Ligarda. And we also concurred with uh, the observation of uh, Ms. Chang na mas, in mas inclusive, mas malawak yung coverage ng uh, SB 375 authored by the chair. Second point, doon po sa uh, definition of terms uh, in terms of people at risk, if we may uh, suggest that instead of just uh, women migrants and their families, we include the entire migrant worker sector. Kasi po as a whole ay napaka-vulnerable po nila sa mga pang-aabuso, exploitation, and of course when disaster comes and when public health emergencies are, are uh, 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 nag-break out. No? So, but then definitely we can, uh, since migration is a gendered phenomenon, definitely we can really emphasize that the responses should be with gender lens and not only with human rights lens. And again, if uh, in addition to inclusion of the entire migrant worker sector, if we may add that apart from the women migrant workers, we also include in the terms gender diverse and LGBTQI plus migrants and of course the members of their families. And then of course when we say migrant workers, we also include both land-based and sea-based migrant workers. Number three, po, for our duty bearers, we fully support and appreciate the onboarding of our LGUs and other relevant stakeholders at the communities, uh, including our OFW help desk, migrant resource centers, and our OFW organizations at the community. Uh, but we need, of course, we, and we support the proposal in the bills to capacitate them uh, accordingly and allocate resources. Number four, um, I think mahalaga po na maging visible under the Magna Carta of Women, we have the gender focal point officer uh, in our embassies and consulates. And of course, in the gender, the CHR as gender ombud, meron din po silang mga gender focal at the regional levels. And uh, tuwa ako nandito po yung ating CHR. But I think we have to make them visible, particularly sa migrant sector. Kasi min, uh, nagulat kami nung nakarang uh, consultation with the CHR. Hindi masyadong ina-assume ng ating mga migrant workers na kasama sa mandato ng ating CHR ang migrants' rights. And uh, more so, yung usapin ng akrapatan ng mga women migrant workers. So I think it would be very good, particularly in the context of the proposed measures, that we make visible the gender focal point officers on site in particular. But one query po, uh, I, we are seeking clarification because prior to the enactment of the Department of Migrant Workers, yun pong gender focal point officer on site ay nasa pangangalaga po ng ating Department of Foreign Affairs. But now that there are two offices overseas, yun po ba'y magkakaroon ng dalawang gender focal point officer, one for the embassy consulates and the other one for the migrant offices. So this is a query for clarification po. Uh, next item po, of course, definitely, dahil yung ating proposed measure hindi pa naka, nakasali yung ating Department of Migrant Workers, then definitely po yung ating aming mungkahe is in the migration governance, in the governance of this uh, measure, syempre po naka-onboard ang ating Department of Migrant Workers. And uh, the other issue, uh, Chair, is that uh, we also would like to share the resources already available, particularly for people on the move or for migrant workers. Nakasulat po ito dun sa aming position paper. We'd like to call your attention on the guidelines, principles, and best practices developed by this project of the United Nations, the Migrants in Countries in Crisis. This is led by this was led by the United States government and the Philippine government sometime in 2015 and 2016. Kaya lamang po hindi nakasali doon sa MIKIC principles and guidelines and processes yung pandemic context. But 
Pero mahalaga na nandoon na po yung mga mga guidelines particularly in reference to people on the move. The other uh, resource that we would like to share and we are happy that uh, Ms. Chang is here is definitely yun pong dinevelop din ng various UN agencies what is called the 16 essentials for quality coordinated multi-sectoral services to women migrant workers who are subject uh, to violence. So maganda pong maging uh, guide din ito ng ating mga service providers when attending to women migrant workers, particularly those who are experiencing or have gone through experiences of violence and gender-based violence. Uh, pangatlo po, and I'm happy to note the presence of the UNFPA, Oxfam, Plum, Plan International, uh, in 2020 at the early onset of the pandemic, the, there was this project conducted or led by the UNFPA to do a gender and inclusion assessment of COVID-19 on women on women and children. At ang uh, Center for Migrant Advocacy po ay nakasama to look specifically into the impact of the COVID-19 on our migrant workers. So the, the, the study came out with a set of recommendations from strategies and also in terms of uh, themes that should be addressed. For example, like human rights and gender equality lens should be the, uh, proposed to be the one to look at uh, that, that issue. Strengthening safety nets, implementing if effective uh, uh, affirmative measures, uh, communicating to the farthest behind with focus areas on health equity, economic equity and safety and and protection. And I hope that our colleagues uh, who are uh, the, the authors of this bill would uh, also mention that. And that's it, uh, Madam Chair. And uh, yeah, in, that would be in addition to what the other colleagues from the women's sector would be speaking about. Marami pong salamat and looking forward to the approval of the proposed measures. Thank you. Thank you din, Ellen. At uh, marami salamat sa mga highlights na bini sinabi mo ngayon bukod dun sa full report na isinumintin nyo na. And uh, uh, noted po nung chair yung clarification, hihingiin din po namin sa DMW at sa DFA ngayong nasa process of transition din sila ng ibang tungkulin dati ng DFA na ngayon ang DMW na ang magiging responsable tungkol dun sa gender focal point officer. So marami salamat and see you po sa technical working group. Okay, uh, ngayon naman po, uh, pakinggan natin mula sa uh, Women's Legal and Human Rights Bureau, si Ms. Uh, Paklarin, Jalen Paklarin. Um, hello, uh, good morning yes, hello. everyone. Okay, you yes. have the floor ma'am. Yes ma'am, good morning Senator Risa and uh, Madam Chair and uh, good morning also uh, Senator Robin Padilla. Um, I would just like to highlight that this bill is timely, you no? Know, because um, I will just go straight to the point because WLB during the pandemic, uh, during the height of the pandemic, received a lot of inquiries during the pandemic with, when cases such as Republic Act 9262, rape, uh, online sexual exploitation of uh, children and and uh, women. Uh, we're not prioritized during the uh, pandemic. It's just timely that we pass a law that will not allow the prioritization of GBV cases, but rather to prioritize them, especially during the pandemic, such as women, girls, women migrant workers, persons with disabilities, living with HIV AIDS, uh, who were not able to access services due to lack of gender responsive response and protocol during crisis and, and during the crisis and the pandemic. I think we need to highlight the inclusion also as mentioned by uh, UN Women and CMA, the inclusion of essential services as part of the services, which we all know is already included the bill. So, uh, Madam Chair, meron lang po akong apat na punto na gusto ko lang pong i-highlight. Number one, I think we need to include in the bill the increased cases of online sexual exploitation against women and children, especially girls, during the pandemic. I know that we already have an OSA Act law, but we need to include it as part of the context during the pandemic. I think these data are missing and needs to look into the into complementation with the current OSA Act law, anti-voyeurism law, and other related laws. We also need to ensure uh, social protection for ch children in the context of crisis. Uh, particularly, may tatlo lang pa akong gustong i-highlight the specific, maybe we need to include OSEC or OSEC and uh, those in the context of women and girls children in Section 12. Uh, in Section 7, in the creation of the... Uh, 
interagency. Maybe we need to include aside from the uh, DRR. MC and PCW, the role of DILG, because this is in partnership with the LGUs, and we, we all know that DILG has the prerogative in implementing protocols and guidelines because uh, this law is about protocols, and definitely DILG po ang magbababa nito. At yung huli ko pong punto ay yung sa Section 2020 po, no? na kung saan ay inilista po rito yung mga iba't ibang ahensya na inclu, uh, na tumutulong po sa women migrant workers, no? gaya ng nabanggit na ng mga naunang nagsalita. Pero dahil meron na po tayong uh, DMW or Department of Migrant Workers, baka kailangan i-revisit po lang itong section na ito given the new context. Yun lamang po at gaya po ng iba, sana nga po mapasa na po itong bill na to dahil ang pandemic ay nandyan pa at yung ating mga vulnerable at marginalized groups of women and girls and children ay patuloy pa rin pong nakakaranas dito at gaya nga ng sabi ko they are being deprioritized just because they think there are other issues that need to be prioritized compared to the issues of gender-based violence. Yun lamang po at maraming salamat. Maraming salamat din po Ms. Paclarin. Uh, at sa pakikiisa niya dun sa, actually may specific date din na binigay si Ms. Chang na sana by March 8, International Women's Day ngayong taon ay maipasa na po natin ito. Thank you po. Uh, ngayon, uh, uh, mula sa Plan International. Uh, Komsek, sino pong resource person sa Plan International? Okay, Ms. Twyla David, you have the floor, ma'am. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, and to everyone in this room for allowing us to um, uh, be part of this conversation. Um, our position in uh, Plan International Philippines, uh, 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 we are respected, respectfully submitting our position statement. Uh, we have submitted it last night, uh, and essentially we wanted to highlight uh, that we are strongly um, uh, the positions that are outlined, um, the, the position or the policies that are outlined in Senate Bills number 375 and 1339 are things that we fully support of, and we view them as a positive step forward towards a gender responsive response, not only to the COVID-19 crisis, but also to um, communities and um, individuals that are experiencing uh, exclusion, vulnerability, and um, uh, poverty in their lives. So one of the things that we really wanted to highlight uh, in this conversation is that um, the first position that we wanted to highlight is that we need to be able to recognize that disasters and crisis affect girls and boys, women and men differently. Isa sa mga napaka-importanting conversation or results na nakuha namin, for example, in the rapid gender analysis that we conducted in Typhoon Paeng, for example, in Maguindanao, highlights that despite the incredible resilience and capacity that women and girls, for example, face, no, uh, or, or women and girls um, show in at the face uh, uh, at the onset and during disaster. There are still unequal power relations, uh, roles and responsibilities, and access to resources that influence how these type these communities cope and recover from disaster. And we need to be able to have a deliberate conversation with these groups to make sure that their needs are met uh, and that their needs are also factored in. Um, we also need to highlight that uh, women's domestic and community roles, for example, are which are usually set aside. No, they're not considered as a value add in identifying disaster risks, uh, especially for themselves and for girls. Uh, we need to be able to include those in the conversation, and they need to be consulted. So, nabanggit kanina yung nothing about us without us. Uh, so we need to be able to ensure the deliberate and meaningful participation, especially of women and girls, in community plans that help build security for their families, uh, including increased income or awareness, uh, for example, or personal preparedness and, and health. So just moving really forward to some of the position statements that we have, uh, it's really ensuring that, as mentioned earlier, really recognizing the roles of girls and women, most especially, uh, and ensuring that uh, we are using um, uh, that we are using data gathering tools that are very specific to uh, sex, age, and disability, and analyze those correctly uh, to ensure that policies and interventions to prepare for and respond to crisis are equitable, that they're gender transformative, and that they are putting the rights of women and girls, especially front and center. 
Uh, there's also a section uh, or Article 3 of Bill uh, 375 where we wanted to highlight a little bit the, low, the role of local governments. And uh, I think we wanted to mention in, that, uh, in, our, uh, in our position paper that um, there needs to be a deliberate involvement of the local governments and have them um, participate in the risk reduction and management for a better understanding of the interplay of hazards, of risks, exposure and vulnerabilities. Of course, local governments are inherently closer to the communities we want to serve together. Uh, and also, we want to be able to ensure that the meaningful participation from girls, young women, and women with intersecting vulnerabilities are factored in with the support of the local governments. Um, I think since we're on the topic as well, um, wag po natin kakalimutan sana yung pagtap ng sangguni ang kabataan or youth councils. There are also a lot of formal federated groups, uh, for example, of youth with disabilities that we can help um, group together you know, to develop programs that will help address the issues of young people um, who are facing crisis, particularly around mental health and gender-based violence that continue to be silent, you know, um, sil uh, that continue to be silent uh, conversations uh, to have um, on, on the onset of a crisis. And um, just moving on forward to some of the recommendations we added, and we don't want to um, uh, repeat some of the things that were already mentioned, but one of the things we really wanted to highlight as well is risk communication, um, really making them accessible, um, making them culturally resonant. Um, sometimes in our effort to um, produce risk communication processes that are novel and new, we forget that sometimes going low tech or going door to door are meaningful ways, no? Are meaningful modalities to integrate infection prevention and control uh, with risk factors, uh, such as including in the conversation gender-based violence, mental health, and and social stigma. We, um, as mentioned earlier, magka 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 connect din po ang usapin ng um program um, program uh, recommendations in terms of uh, uh covid-19 and gender based violence uh, gender based domestic and online violence and we need to make sure that um we expand the conversation to include safe reporting uh grievance and justice mechanisms for the victims and um also connected to that and if if there's a way for us to also expand the conversation around mental and emotional support, especially to girls and young women, making sure that through the process, we do not re-traumatize them. And we also provide psychosocial and wellness programs uh, to ensure the continuum of care. Uh, we need to also provide, uh, we need to be able to also, also to provide uh, guidance on where to access hygiene and sexual and reproductive health items and services and allow girls to know how to protect themselves from harassment and violence and where to access psychosocial support uh, during a pandemic or a crisis uh, through information dissemination and awareness drives. Um, we are also um, proposing to change the article name. Um, I think there were recommendations previously to ch article, uh, changes to article names, but perhaps it would help us to um, highlight the differentiation, you know, uh, between the needs of uh, specific ages and uh, gender, uh, uh, specific age needs, and uh, uh, and we propose to change the article name from programming and management to address gender differentiated needs of pan uh, of women during a pandemic to programming and management to address gender differentiated needs of women and adolescent girls uh, during the pandemic. It's to really better reflect the specific and unique needs and experiences of adolescent girls, especially during the pandemic. Um, and maybe just uh, going through the last uh, recommendations that we have here, and really important for us still to um, to, con to um to highlight, um, as, ha as has been repeatedly mentioned earlier, uh, despite the pandemic um, um, tapering down, no, there's still a need for us to really support and create spaces for girls and young women to participate, um, to promote leadership in all stages of emergency and disaster management. There has been a reference to children um, children as young as age four to five in our work, for example, uh, that makes reference to their um, desire to be included in, in response and recovery processes and making sure that our programs and our policies are also um, reflective, you know, of, of their, of the voices and that we are 
creating spaces for them to amplify, to report, to speak up, and even volunteer you know, to decisions and solutions during emergencies and policies that change um, their lives. Um, and lastly, you know, um, just really making sure that um, we invest in girls, in young women, um, not only through capacity building and organizing to fighting violence online, for example, but really to expand the conversation around jobs and economic programs for young women, um, to making sure that, um, uh, in, for example, internet connectivity in areas where internet connection can is not um, is, is 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 very hard to penetrate, and that the girls and young women have access to life-saving information and lifeline uh, to protection services. So, with lockdowns and school closures, um, progress, for example, made in education is at risk of being reserved. So, we believe that. At the end of the day, we, um, you know, the, the the right of every child and girl, especially girls and women, to access uh, safe and quality education and programs and involvement in in the in the entire programmatic phase of everything that we do and and everything that affects their lives. Um, we need to make make, uh, make sure that they are involved and that. Um, the, the norms that have existed before the pandemic and the norms that are being exacerbated uh, exacerbated uh, during the pandemic, kailangan nating basagan yun ng paunti-unti and make sure that they're also involved in decision-making that uh, affect their lives. Uh, that's our position, um, Chair, and uh, we actually have sent the, as I mentioned, I've mentioned I've, uh, we've uh, forwarded the position paper uh, last night, but we're keeping our doors open for any questions or concerns and for everyone here in case uh, uh, they need to reach out, uh, we're happy to jump into a call. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. David, for a very comprehensive and yet also detailed and uh, concrete presentation. Also for that beautiful point that children as young as four or five years old can participate both in our family processes and even national processes. O nga, pag verbal na sila, they can understand, remember, uh, in, give meaning to and also share from their experiences. So marami salamat po. And now I'd like to call um, Dr. Bernadette Velasco from the Department of Health. Ma'am, the chair apologizes. Hindi ko lang pumakita yung pangalan ng ahensya nyo uh, from where I sit. I, I should have called you uh, earlier. Thank you for being present uh, also physically in the hall. Uh, you have the floor po, doctor. Thank you, Madam Chair. And good afternoon po. And good afternoon, Senator Padilla. So we still yet to submit our official position paper, So, but once cleared by the head of office, we will submit to this committee. However, let me share some of our thoughts regarding this matter. Upon review of the proposed bills on, um, on the gender responsive and inclusive public health concern and disaster management, our office supports the bill, seeing it as a valuable compre and comprehensive initiative to strengthen the gender and development initiative during public health emergencies, threats, disasters, and other health events of public concerns. So we just identified two administrative orders that is currently being implemented by the Department of Health. First is the Administrative Order 2016-0005, or the implementation of the Minimum Initial Service Package for Sexual and Repro Reproductive Health, or MISP for SRH, which we think is an important um, policy reference at the national level. Again, this is already being implemented. The next one would be the AO 2017-0007, which is the guidelines on the provision of essential health service package, which mandates ensuring essential health services or the medical and public health, which includes the sexual and um, reproductive health, the water sanitation, nutrition in emergency, and also the MHPSS, which takes care of the mental health and psychosocial support. Again, this is the, these two um, administrative orders being implemented by the Department of Health together with our stakeholders. In general, since our office is um, trying to institutionalize the disaster risk reduction for health, so we, can, we hereby concur on the provisions and objectives of the proposed bill and express our support in the achievement of this initiative. We are one with this committee 
and all the stakeholders in working together with a gender responsive programming and management, especially in these trying times of pandemic. Again, we will submit our official position paper once cleared and approved and signed by our OIC secretary. Thank you very much, ma'am. Marami salamat din po, Dr. Velasco, also for waiting so patiently. <laughs> Um, at mabuting malaman po namin, nating lahat na meron din po tayong mapagsisimulang AOs mula sa DOH na pang input po dun sa pag-improve at pag-finalize ng mga bills namin dito. Maraming salamat po. Um, I think I see... Uh, um... Online na po uh, ang PCW Rep, si Attorney Christine Yuzon Chavez. We have the floor, ma'am. Good afternoon. Hi, good Madam afternoon Chair. po. Yes, please proceed. Thank you. Um, for most, uh, may I convey our utmost appreciation to the Honorable Senator Lisa Hontiveras, Madam Chair, for your support in advancing the women's agenda and for always looking after the women's and ch children's welfare. Um, the PCW, as the oversight and the policymaking body on women's issues and gender equality concerns, highlights the need to ensure that the government promotes gender mainstreaming and pursues gender equality in all aspects of the development process. We express our support on the proposed bills as they respond to the various concerns of women and gender issues that have emerged during the COVID-19 pandemic, such as the surge of gender-based violence cases, lack or the limited access to complaint mechanisms and service facilities due to the limited mobility imposed during the lockdown. And uh, of course, we have cases of deaths due to denial of maternal, sexual and reproductive health services by hospitals and other health care facilities. In fact, in the previous Congress, we have actively supported and lobbied the passage of the bills on gender responsive pandemic and disaster management, both in the House of Representatives and the Senate. Mainstreaming gender in our pandemic response, we have to consider its differentiated impact on women and men so that our actions and strategies will be able to adequately and appropriately address the varying concerns of both uh, of women and men. To enhance the bill, may we submit for consideration of the honorable body our additional suggestions, which are as follows. Uh, on section 6 and 10 on SB numbers 1336 and 375 on leadership, participation, and empowerment of women, the PCW lauds the importance given to women's empowerment, participation, and leadership through the inclusion of a minimum quota for the participation of women in the local development councils. This is aligned with section 11, paragraph B of the MCW. Considering that majority of the health and social sector workforce are women, it is really important that we increase the participation of women in decision-making processes related to the pandemic and other disasters and emergencies. We must recognize uh, women's expertise and their lived experience in situations like the pandemic, as well as the multiple roles that they play in communities and the burdens that they face. Second, on sections three of SB number 1336 and uh, section seven and eight of SB number 375 on national preparedness and response plans to address the gender differentiated needs of women during a pandemic and disaster. There is um, already an existing national disaster risk reduction and management plan. So uh, we recommend that instead of coming up with a new plan, may we suggest to revise the provision mandating that we revisit instead the, in the existing NDRRMP to include a public health emergencies and threats, as well as ensuring that the gender differentiated needs of women are addressed to be cascaded to the local government units. Similarly, on Section 8, the duties of national government agencies and LGUs of, of SP number 375, 
uh, may we suggest that instead of mandating every agency to come up with a gender responsive pandemic preparedness plan manual or protocol, uh, we suggest not to have a separate plan for women as there already exists a gender development plan and budget as provided under RA 9710 or the Magna Carta of Women. The proposed policies, protocols, programs, and activities may just be integrated in the agency and while GPB and their six-year GAT agenda in line with the strategy of mainstreaming gender in government systems, structures, policies, programs, pro processes, and procedures. We also suggest the integration of women and gender issues and concerns in the public service continuity plan, which the Civil Service Commission enjoined uh, all agencies to develop through CSC Memorandum Number 2, Series of 2021. The same issuance is in connection with the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council Memorandum Number uh, 33, Series of 2018. Um, lastly, on section 24 of SB 375 um, or the IRR, instead of identifying specific agencies, may we suggest to state member agencies of the NDRRMC instead, the interagency mechanism for addressing disaster related concerns and the Civil Service Commission with a chair of the NDRRMC. RMC and PCW as co-lead in the development of the IRR. That is all for us, um, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much also, Attorney Uzon Chavez, uh, for reminding us also na siguro yung, yung Magna Carta natin is really the Magna Carta of women at ito in a way nanganak sa lahat nitong mga ibang batas natin at panukalang batas. And uh, thank you also for pointing out other areas of possible partnership. Kahit sa mga uh, agencies or resource persons na wala dito ngayon sa hearing na to, for example, the uh, Civil Service Commission. So, uh, salamat dun sa possibility of our reaching out also to uh, Chair Nograles, which uh, I, I imagine na he would be open to yung, yung recommendation nyo. So, marami salamat pong muli. And now we'll hear from uh, the resource person of Oxfam, Ms. Erika Heronimo. Are you online, ma'am? Yes, Madam Chair. Madam yes, ma'am. You have the floor. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Senator Antiveros, and uh, magandang hapon din po kay uh, Senator Padilla. Um, Oxfam Pilipinas, uh, talagang lords, no, the relevant Senate committees and the esteemed senators and gives it strong support for the Senate bills. We also laud the principles outlining the framework for the future actions. And our recommendations are based on the joint 2020 COVID-19 rapid gender assessment as cited by Ms. Ellen earlier. And we do agree with the recommendations of the other speakers, but we just like to briefly provide a snapshot of our position paper that we submitted earlier. Um, first, in considering a humanitarian no, and extraordinary scenario, the need to consider services as life-saving public health responses to allow unimpeded timely and functional services and information for anti-GDP, SRHR, and access to economic activities. And in emphasizing anticipatory action and preparedness, uh, we do propose a review of the functionality and responsiveness of current gender services so that they are able to cope or are resilient even under extraordinary circumstances. And with that, the need to also have data, ready data at all levels, disaggregated by age, gender, ethnicity, and special needs that recognizes the differentiated and intersectional impacts that were raised by the, our other colleagues. Next po, uh, capacity building activities. Uh, we are happy that it was duly noted in the provisions of both bills, uh, but should recognize that in an emergency situation, risks are heightened and current vulnerabilities are especially among frontline responders. Uh, we also echo the others uh, in terms of challenges to mental well-being and providing support. Uh, 
Miserable uh, more. Yes. To have accurate and delivered during emergency. Ah, yes po. Yes ma. Uh, no, sorry. Earlier, Hello, okay. I thought you had turned off your video because nagkakaroon ng um, lag sa signal nyo. So I thought you turned off your video so that we could hear you better. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, okay. okay. I can turn off it, ma'am, Madam Chair. Para Hindi naman sa gusto kong saran nyo yung video nyo. It's just that <laughs> <laughs> para marinig namin okay. yung sinasabi nyo. Opo. Opo. Okay lang po. Okay lang po, ah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um... Uh, to continue lang po, uh, the need to, yes, ha- to utilize po, no, digital platforms for delivering timely information. Uh, but when the communication infrastructure breaks down, to utilize household-level community networks. Uh, sunod po, develop programs and campaigns to amplify unpaid care. And recognize the additional burden on affirmative action within the bill. Uh, and then also incorporate po gender perspectives in planning and executing uh, pandemic or disaster-related budgets and appropriations. Uh, sa bill din po, may uh, tinutukoy na social protection programs and we note that we need to have a longer-term perspective for recovery and also adapt gender-responsive planning to ensure women are not invisible in both targeting and the delivery of any social protection program. Uh, if we can also po explore protection and recovery mechanisms of women's livelihood so that they can recover quickly from future shocks, just like another pandemic or a national disaster. Insofar naman po as penalties are concerned, uh, elevating the gendered protocols and badging this uh, related response mechanisms as essential and life-saving would mean that we should consider the severity of harm done when mandated public responders withdraw or neglect these services during an emergency. Uh, yun lang po, we would like to commit our support no, in pursuing this timely and relevant legislation and express our interest to be part of the PWG if possible. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Maraming salamat at very possible po, Ms. Geronimo. In fact, kung hindi nyo kinomit yan, eh, hihilingin talaga yun ng chair. So thank you very much and very gladly uh, accepted po. Thank you for your presentation and uh, including for uh, highlighting uh, an issue that's very important to the Committee on Women, the issue of unpaid care even before and also during pandemics and other uh, emergencies. Dahil uh, tayong mga babae, we are also often frontliners in surviving and uh, recovering from, from these disasters. So marami salamat muli. And next, we will hear from Galang Philippines, from Mix Marie Rose Ramos. You have the floor. Magandang hapon po, um, Senator Risa Antivero, Senator Robin Cadilla. Maraming salamat po sa opportunity for para mabigyan niyo po kami ng panahon, ng pakinggan at mabigyan ng aming mga um, inputs para po sa uh, dalawang bill on um, gender responsive and inclusive pandemic and disaster management. Um, kami po ay, we fully support po ang Galang Philippines, uh, kasama po ang iba pang mga LGBTIQ plus organizations. Um, I think I can speak for them also. We fully support po itong mga bills na to kasi very timely siya, lalo na po to help alleviate yung burden ng iba-ibang marginalized sectors na na, na, na experience po, lalo nga yung nagkaroon ng pandemya po. Uh, since ang Pilipinas po, regularly naman tayong kinakatok ng mga disaster typhoon, earthquake, volcanic eruption, mga nag-aalbrotong vulkan natin. And ngayon po patuloy nating um, kinakaharap ang COVID-19 pandemic at sana nga hindi, sabi nga ni Chang, sana wala nang sumunod dito ng mas malala o mas matindi pang pandemya at sana matapos na nga po itong um, COVID-19 pandemic. At sa mga ganitong kaganapan po, ang isa sa mga pinaka-evident ay yung discrimination and ex- exclusion of persons of diverse OGSE or sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, and sex characteristics. Lalo na po sa mga emergency and disaster response efforts. Um, nitong, nung nagsimula po ang COVID-19, mas naging doble, triple yung naging structural inequalities, lalo na na na-experience ng mga vulnerable sectors um, such as women of different identities and LGBTIQ plus individuals. 
Uh, nung nagsisimula po ang um, COVID-19, uh, nakita po na yung gender issues or naging evident po na ang gender issues ay hindi nakikita as priority concern. Para ngayon pa nga lang po ata nagkakaroon ng mas malawakang pag-uusap at mas komprehensibong proposed bills kung saan ang gender issues are considered and included in disaster response and management. Um, sa aming pag-aaral din po, nakita namin na yung um, pandemia um, results in economic instability kung saan nagiging limited or nagwawalan ng resources lalo na po ang mga LGBTIQ plus individuals. At ito po ay nag equate na patulo, patungo sa uh, gender-based violence, especially uh, since ang mga LGBTIQ individuals po, usually sila rin po yung tumutulong sa pamilya nila. At kapag wala na po silang pantulong pinansyal, na uuwi na po ito sa pang-abuso at uh, patuloy na pag-discriminate sa kanila, lalo na nung kanila mga kapamilya. Um, isa rin po sa mga na-document namin, ano nagsisimula po ang pamimigay ng ating um, ever-famous ayuda, ay um, marami pong mga LGBTIQ plus household-led ang hindi, either hindi sinasama sa listahan pa lang mismo, or Isinama man sila, hindi po sila nasa priority, nasa huli sila ng listahan. Sinasabi po na hindi priority dahil hindi naman po sila lehitimong pamilya. So, isa po yun sa mga na i-dokumento rin po namin. Kaya maganda po at very timely po itong gender responsive and gender sensitive na mekanismo na sana nga po ay maipasa dahil mahalaga po na lahat po tayo, leave no one behind regardless of your sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression. Sana nga po ay sususugan ko po yung panalangin din ni Chang na sana po by March 8, ito po ay maipasa. Maraming salamat pong muli, Senator Rizal Antivirus, our equality champion ng matagal na po. Maraming salamat po, Mix Marie Rose. Uh, at sa pakikipanalangin nyo sa ating uh, lahat na hari na wa maipasa sa International Women's Day ngayong taon. Salamat po. Um, and then, uh, last but not the least, before I uh, also ask Asik Poon if he'd like to uh, say a few words, uh, tawagin ko mula sa Akabayanihan Incorporated, Kissy Sumailo Perlman. Is Kissy, are you online? Yes, you have the floor. Yes, can hear you. Can hear you. Uh, uh, maraming salamat po for inviting us here. So, Akbayanian po has been working with um, some of our disaster-affected communities over the last uh, couple of disasters, including the Tal Volcano eruption at um, itong nakaraang COVID na to, no? Um, so, we we also support uh, the two bills filed Um uh, that's sponsored by, of course, uh, the Honorable Senator Risa Ontiveros and Senator Lauren Regarda. And I think this reflects the ongoing need and clamor to address gender differentiated needs and challenges uh, faced by women and girls in disasters and emergencies. Um, uh, the mention of Muna as one of the most um, climate vulnerable countries in the world, no? The pandemic uh, further pushed uh, many of our um, kababayans po and many women and girls into poverty, um, especially those with limited resources to recover. So, marami na pong plans in place and na po you, uh, and laws do, in place and exist um, to address gender issues, DRR, pandemic and health emergencies, but they remain separate and mandate based. No, so um, quickly, po, these are some of our comments and suggestions which we will submit to the committee after this um, um, after this hearing. Po, um, one is susugan ko lang po yung sinabi ni attorney Christine Hughes on Chavez about um having a separate plan as it, um as indicated po in the two bills filed no um so maaring instead of a new plan we need to look at linking um um and strengthening um actions um on gen on addressing gender differentiated impacts in the existing plans such as the national drm plan um 
So there's a new plan that's um, been approved uh, by the NDRMC, the 2020 to 2030, which set specific outcomes that addresses um, um, uh, gender there, including improving uh, the collection and utilization of sex, age, disability, disaggregated data, um, and making sure that in, they're in line with the sender framework for DRR targets. Um, there's also the National Climate Change Action Plan, po, um, which runs from 2015 to 2013, which has a strong outcome that recognizes the vulnerability of the health and uh, social delivery systems to climate change risk. At meron din pong National Disaster Preparedness and Response Plans ang, ang Ang Pilipinas po, so maaring tignan kung how uh, how that's reflected and who are the main agencies that need to deliver on um on these uh and on these targets. Um, so one of the during the development of the gender and DRR um profile, uh, which was commissioned by UN Women, so one of the main um main recommendation there was to really improve the use and application of gender responsive and inclusive language and actions in these plans. So they remain to be quite blanketed um, um, and blanketed in, in their approach and that reflects also in the local actions for DRM that uh, are blanketed as well um, in, 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 in approach and lacks targeting based on um, sex, age, disability, sex, age, and disability. Um, we should also, I think, in, in um, we should also in, try to include also the Climate Change Commission in this discussion as we anticipate the emergence of climate-related public health emergencies and um, and um, the the COVID nineteen pandemic is not is just one of anticipated public health emergencies we'll face um, with um, with uh, uh, climate change um, impacts uh, all upon us. So we so we need to improve the understanding and application of this climate risk information and conflict analysis so that LGUs and NGs can better plan for future risk. Um, and public health emergencies that could lead to internal displacement and other disruptions. So, um, siguro um, inclusion of those languages then po, and um, also include Climate Change Commission in these discussions. Um, a second point would be related to um, uh, emphasizing the need to implement um, uh, a strategic and systematic planning building and retrofitting of um, evacuation centers, temporary shelters, temporary treatment facilities, and other relevant public buildings so that they are built to standards um, and with gender sensitive and inclusive design in mind, that they're hazard resilient and located in safe areas, especially in highly vulnerable and low income areas uh, with national and local budget allocation. And they should not, this, this role should not be solely dependent on LG users' funds and capacity are limited. This should be a national priority in disaster preparedness with budgetary allocation. And then, I hindi ko na po, ano, um, include yung ibang suggestion, no? Um, but last two points here would be in the capacity building um, provision, of the two bills to include also not just frontline workers but DRM workers and volunteers um, and making sure that they're trained and equipped um, to support the delivery of SRHR uh, accessible and GBV referral services on the ground and while um, um, help desk, for example, uh, should be in every evacuation centers. This is not always the case um, in, in many disasters that we've monitored. So there's still uh, a lot of room to, to provide support and technical assistance to LGUs and DRM workers and volunteers, as well as youth organizations and women's organizations in this regard. 
Um, we'd also like to make sure that GBV and SRHR is included in risk information and education campaigns in, in early warning systems at the national and local level. And lastly, po, um, um, when it uh, on section 12, there was a provision there on um, the economic empowerment of women and social protection. No? Um, so aside from the um, public agencies uh, mandated to to help with economic recovery and providing social protection to also reach out to um, uh, to include private sector groups um, um, and make sure that this is not limited uh, to livelihood programs, but to technical skills building. Um, insurance and, and uh, other types of technical assistance that enables access to capital in enterprise. So that would be all from Akbayanihan Foundation. And we'd, we would submit our um, specific recommendations po on the bills after this one. Salamat po, uh, Senator Risa. Salamat din, Ms. Kiesi, uh, para sa parating na detailed na position paper, but also for already highlighting uh, some of the important broad strokes. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, would Asik Puno like to say a few words on behalf of the DILG on these bills? Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, just a couple of quick points. Uh, first of all, the DILG does support the uh, bills filed by the Madam Chair. Uh, you can count on us to participate actively in the TWG. In the meantime, ma'am, it might be important also to note that uh, we do recognize the vital role that the DILG plays in the uh, in pandemic and disaster management that are uh, gender responsive. As a matter of fact, uh, the department, together with the Commission on Human Rights, issued a uh, joint memorandum circular entitled Ensuring Gender Responsive Interventions to COVID-19 and the New Normal, including ensuring prompt, effective, and survivor-centered response to all forms of gender-based violence. So that is a JMC that does exist. We will have to tweak it. Uh, this was issued in 2020. Uh, we're trying to move this forward to actual implementation. In, line, uh, in light of the uh, pending bills filed, we will have to tweak this. Uh, but, but we will, and we, we do recognize the vital role that the DILG plays here. Uh, and like I said, uh, we will actively participate. The, part, the uh, position paper of the department will be forthcoming, ma'am, as promised. Uh, and we'll see you at the TWG. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, ASEC, for those. And good to know na tulad ng DOH na meron din tayong sa aming trabaho sa bills na ito mapagsisimulang uh, dalawang, at least dalawang administrative orders, may JMC din ang department niyo na I, I, I am sure is rights-based kasi in partnership pala ito sa CHR. So looking forward to the further participation of the department. Salamat po. To my dear colleagues and Robin, meron ba kayong gustong any uh, closing remarks? Mahal na taga-Pangulo, napaka, ano na po, napakaganda po nung aking isinagawang pakikinig. Punong-puno na po, sobrang punong-puno. Maraming salamat po. Chukran, Sen. Robin. So, dear colleagues, maraming salamat muli para sa inyong pakikilahok. The committee will be scheduling a technical working group on the uh, prevention of teenage pregnancies bills uh, and then uh, draft the committee report. Ganon din po para sa ating mga bills sa uh, uh, gender uh, inclusive uh, pandemic protocols, ida draft na rin po ng committee ang committee report. So, uh, looking forward to uh, your continuing assistance to our committee, uh, both sa legislation and syempre pagdating na sa implementation. So, shop na po niya iyo, nyo iyon, yung oversight doon. And sa, sa tulong namin sa oversight. Maraming salamat po, mabuhay. Take care, everyone. Oh, I'm sorry, the chair adjourns this hearing. Salamat sa aking... Magaling at mapapag-alalang staff. Thank you po.